In this week's episode, we're back with more refurbishments, more popcorn buckets, and more rambling. Walls have gone up from Main Street to Paradise Pier and parts in between. DCA didn't want to be left out and now has their own AP popcorn bucket. But why was it released so late? World of Disney's also getting some work done, so expect it to get even more congested in that place. Food and Wine Festival reservations are now open, but don't expect to see Guy Fieri's hair. Also, Mary Poppins, Forge for Change, Lunar New Year Eats, and more on this solo episode of the Mouse Pyre Podcast. I'm Anthony. I'm Diggs. I'm Tim. Welcome to Mouse Pyre, your source for Disney, Star Wars, and everything in between. This is the podcast where both empires collide. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Mouse Pyre Podcast. What's going on? Uh oh. The apprentice lives. What is this? You best start believing in ghost stories, Miss Turner. You're in one. Bring up me, Harley Joe. You never had a friend like me. Some imagination, huh? <laughs> made you look oh no two three four five ah 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 oh hey guys the count we're yeah, counting uh, in different directions here uh tim is uh, learning the count for the first time and he's doing very well well you know i counted up Diggs counted down i didn't count at all and, <laughs> he and never the fact does is that we're here yet again <laughs> just it's well established <laughs> that i can't do math on your phone and your car wherever you listen that's where we are today exactly Hello? Hi, everyone. How are you guys doing? We're doing pretty good. Oh, oh boy. Wait, who was that? I don't know. I think they let a rat in. <laughs> the ratty situation around here. So what do we got to talk about today? Whoa. Mm. Whoa. I've decided that if anybody ever mentions puffins to me, I'm going to refer to them exclusively as earth porgs. Is that an earth porg? It's something. Anyway, I'm a little tired. I had a lot to do today. What'd you do? I actually, um, I woke up. That's half the work right there. Yes, that was a lot of work just to wake up. And what did I do today? I actually, I, I actually really didn't do anything, but still, I'm tired. <laughs> Dirty. Hey, you know, it happens, you know. It's just one of those days. I'm just kind of tired and. Just one of those days. And, I, I had a lot to do today, too. And real quick, you know, I, I mean, you been, actually had a lot to do today. We can talk about that in just one little second. But I just want to—he's as as done. I just want to say real quick because I was telling the guys here that you guys know about my truck not working, and mm. and took it to a shop, and it, it went from being we don't know what's wrong with it because it works fine now, and now it's at the point that okay, it's going to cost twenty twenty seven hundred dollars to fix it. What are you fixing if you told me you didn't know what's wrong with it in the first place and you had it for like two weeks now? I don't understand how that works out. So that's another thing that's really irritating to me. My car's been in the shop for a month. Damn. <laughs> but you have transportation. But tomorrow I'm supposed to get it back, I think. Maybe. It was last week too, but we'll see what happens. That's why you. one of the first things I learned was not to trust mechanics. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know how. You, what, what Somebody has to fix Somebody it. Somebody has to fix it, though. That's the unfortunate thing, right? And it's like you know, when it comes to transmissions, you no one knows where to go. No one knows where to take it to. You know, the only the only places you guys know anyone will know is someone told you go to this place, Midas, to right? Place. My, the, what was it the transmission place, Midas? But no, then right. that's a corporation. Then Amco, uh, Amco. AMCO. Double A, <laughs> MCO. But then those are the big corporations that right. you know going to charge you three yeah. thousand dollars. Exactly. So for me, the problem was we had a blown head gasket, and we have a warranty. But the warranty company wants to make sure that they're not going to authorize the repair of the head gasket, which includes tearing the whole engine apart. And then when they put it back together, they want to make sure there's not other problems. 
So they require that they send the the rods out to um, snack time. They they require that they send the rods out to this company that superheats them to reveal cracks. And if they make sure that there's no cracks, then they'll authorize the repair on the head gasket. Because crack is whack. Crack is whack. So basically the process of the mechanic that we use, tearing the engine apart to get the rods out, get the head gasket switched, all this stuff, then sending it out, then getting it back, then putting it all back together. It's It's been a... I don't know. We'll see what happens with your truck. But. Well, they're telling me Tuesday I'll get it back. So this... We thought it was just a module. Yes, but like I said, I another thing too is because they were saying, "Oh, we don't know what's wrong with it." Blah 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 blah. It's working fine. I also read that if the problem was the module that disconnecting the battery would reset it and would be make it you know better. I was thinking that the fact that the battery was disconnected and then they connected it again and it's working fine that maybe that happened it reset. But now it's going to cost me twenty seven hundred dollars. But you said your dad had already unplugged the battery and re- did it, and it didn't reset. Yeah, but then they when when it was at the shop, they did it again. They undid it, and yeah. So on I don't that know. note, you can donate to our Patreon. <laughs> twenty seven hundred dollars for my truck, so I can get here to the podcast. Get that. No, yeah. that's all about the, that's. You need to go Michael's route on that one. Oh, that's a, that's go a, fund me. Yeah, that's a go. Go fund, fund my transmission. That's a go fund. Go fund yourself. <laughs> Go fund me $3. That's what Michael's got <laughs> and, uh, for a corn dog. So what did you do today? I woke up late and then, what did you give me the, yeah, we'll go figure. that's every day for us. Yeah. yeah. I don't well, know what late is. I woke up late, but then or, I had to deal with, uh, we had to do a bunch of shopping and then we had to go to the AT&T store. Uh, we had bought when the iPhone ten was coming out, I had pre-ordered uh, pre-ordered the phones. And then um, I don't use email much, uh, which is why I was trying to offer another way for people to contact because I'm not an email guy, so I figured maybe, you know, they can contact us through the page or whatever too. Send us messages. Anyway, so they sent out an email, but I was watching the email right after I bought the phones. So... They sent out an email like three days later that basically told me that my orders had been canceled. So I said, all right. I closed my computer and I put it back in the drawer and I haven't really looked at it since. Um, And I have another computer that we use a little bit, but I don't go on email on that one. So three months went by and a lady showed up on our front porch and uh, told me her son had stolen the phones off my porch and returned them to me. (laughs) <laughs> so now I have these three iPhones that I've seen, I've since played with one and I didn't particularly like it that much. So I'm not sure if that's the one we want or not, but anyway, they're really expensive. They're like almost $1,300 each. So I decided we're not going to spend this money. I want to get out of this and return these phones, but you know, we're well past the return period. So they're like, oh, did you get a police report? And I said, I didn't know that they were stolen. I didn't know that they'd been delivered. Yeah, it's my fault for not looking at the bill every month. But, you know, it's on auto pay. It just pays. I know how much it's supposed to be, and it just pays it every month. So anyway, finally today I had to go back to the store. It's been a whole process calling in, calling in another time, going back to the store. Basically, I had to, I called in and they told me that, They, as much as they believed me, they couldn't verify what I was saying because they couldn't receive incoming emails at their customer service department. They're like, for security reasons, they don't take... Oh, right, right. They can't get emails. So they said, you go into the store and show a store manager the the emails that you got. Verify that it's true, and then we can work on some process for, you know, something for you. So I had to go in there. The store manager, like, wrote a report entered it into the file, and then I called the customer service back or their, like, loyalty department. You know, when they ask what you want, you tell them I want to cancel my phone line. (laughs) And then I had to wait again another 15 minutes once the girl answered for a manager to get on the phone. And then finally this guy was like, okay, we can can take them back. I'm going to send you labels. You print the labels out, put them back in the mail to us. And uh, Were they going to email you the labels? mm Mm-hmm. 
Are you gonna open? But the, I know, are you gonna open that email? But I know that I'm getting those. I know that I'm getting those emails. Like I know to check. I know to check for them because he said I'm gonna send them. So uh, anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it, and uh, it's been a little stressful because it's a bunch of money, and they've already they already charged us like five hundred dollars right. for the phones. They charged us a fee for our previous phones that we had to finish paying them off, basically. And then they charged us like another 300 and something dollars in payments so far for these phones. Three months worth of payments times three phones. So something like 300 and whatever dollars that we wouldn't have otherwise paid. Um, I don't know. It's a little bit of a fiasco, but I figured it out. Yay. Woohoo. So today, today is Wednesday here in this studio, not in reality. In reality, it'll be like Friday in your reality listeners. There you go. But uh, the reason we didn't record Tuesday is because I went somewhere special. It's not time to tell you guys that. No, yet, not but, yet. But I did go somewhere cool, and you guys will hear about it in a sec. All right. But we have to start with some sad news. Original Musketeer Doreen Tracy passed away on Wednesday uh, she was uh, 74 years old, died of pneumonia, which was a result of complications from a two-year battle with cancer. Now, she did star on, like I said, Original Mouseketeer, which ran on ABC, of course, Mickey Mouse Club, on or from 1955 through 1959. And it says here, I'm reading from the D23 article, that she auditioned for the uh, Mouseketeers when she was 12. So basically, after the Mouseketeers, it was all downhill from here. Well, I don't know about that. Did she do some good stuff? Well, in uh, 1955, she was in the feature film Westward Ho, The Wagons, which starred Fess Parker. And then in the 90s, it starred McDonald's French fries. (laughs) (laughs) I guess so, huh? That's an inside joke for you crazy hit park history people. Yeah. But it says here, following uh, the the Mickey Mouse Club years... In the 60s, Tracy continued her showbiz career, guest starring on several episodic television programs as well as touring American military bases in South Vietnam and Thailand with her own act. says after she returned to the U.S., she shifted gears to work behind the scenes and held positions that included publicist to musician and composer Frank Zappa. Yeah. As well as a multi-decade career in administration at Warner Brothers. So she went to the dark side. I guess so for a little bit. But it says that she did remain close to her Disney roots, maintaining longtime friendships with her fellow Mouseketeers. Woohoo! In the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, she co-starred with them in several Mickey Mouse Club reunion shows at Disneyland and at Disney conventions, last celebrating the 60th anniversary in 2015. It says here that Tracy is survived by her son, Bradley, and two grandchildren, Gavin and Autumn. It's really, really sad. You know what? When um, I know I talked about this before that uh, we have like a picture that's in the Disney vault in my house, a picture of the Mouseketeers, and they're all signed by the Mouseketeers, mm-hmm. except for, of course, Annette. But, I mean, I think it's pretty cool because, like I said, it's in our vault, and uh, I got to get in the a vault. Yes, we have a Disney vault that no one can get into. Not even you? I know. I can't get into it. No. So, yeah, I mean, that's like I said, we have all those autographs, which was really cool. And uh, we didn't <laughs> actually get them, you know, during that time. It was I think it was somewhere in Disneyland when they were there. And we got uh, all the autographs and stuff like that. But, yeah, it's really, really sad. An original Mouseketeer passed away. Well, the fact is that they're all getting up there in years, the ones that are even still with us, right? And that's the fact, it's unfortunately, that's the fact that that original generation of Disney stars, Imagineers, uh, you know, most of the people that we know as the legends are, they're old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Betty White, 96 today. Yeah, yeah today's birthday. her birthday, 96 birthday. years old. It's the uh, Golden Girls. Everybody loves the Golden Girls, right? Yeah, I do. I never watched it. Oh boy, <laughs> you're missing out, man. The adventures of Dorothy, Rose, Blanche, and what's the mom, what was the grandma's name? Sophia. Yep. I thought they were all grandmas. Well, they're all grandmas, <laughs> but the, the Dorothy's like mom, great oh. grandma. But 
Well, I don't know. Did Blanche have kids? I'm not sure. Yes, she did. She had kids? Yeah. But she was like a hussy. <laughs> <laughs> she had kids before she was a hussy. Oh. Yeah. Or in between. Or right. or while. I don't know. That, I remember mind. one episode where her, I don't know how that her, works. her and Sophia, the really old one, who in real life, actually, Sophia was the youngest. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they like were sharing a boyfriend in one of the episodes. It was great. And back then, that was actually filmed at the... Disney Studios or Walt Disney Studios in Florida. In Florida. Right. Where the Disney, what is it called now? The Hollywood Studios? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Speaking of old stuff from that era, I think that might be a little older, but I'm really, and it's not Disney, but I'm really excited. It, actually, it is a little bit because it's ABC. I'm super excited for the return of Roseanne next week. I am too. Super excited. I think I, that's just the greatest thing ever. I I didn't watch the show that much when it was on, but since you've like watched it all, yeah. I mean, I didn't hate it or anything, right? Right. But I it was just it wasn't, you know. And during that time, we were our, young. We our, were young. Our TV, you know, was controlled by parents, right? So we didn't watch that. We right. watched whatever they watched. But yeah, and during the reruns and stuff, I watched it. And I, I mean, I, I think America needs the commentary of that family. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be interesting. I, I, yeah, I can't wait for, to see that too. You know, and they're all supposed to. The original Becky is coming back both as Becky, Beckys. but both both Beckys are back. The other, the later Becky, is supposed to play a different part. Uh, yeah. I was wondering Sarah, about that. Uh, yeah, Sarah Chalk. She's so Sarah Chalk, who was in Scrubs. I was wondering and a few that. Other things. How I Met Your they're, Mother. Yes, How I Met Your Mother. Also, she was like one of the girlfriends. Uh, yeah, she's the one that Sarah, left. Sarah, I think she's she the one that stood him at the, left him at the yeah. altar. Right. I'm just excited. I, it's like February something. February or maybe March. Might be March. Not sure. It's only Disney based on the fact that it's ABC, but right, right. Which now now they're calling America's Network. Is it now? That's what they say. <laughs> anyway, I'm excited for that. I don't know. That's a nice segue from the uh, Golden Girls. But <laughs> uh, did you guys hear that Spike has changed names yeah, again? As Paramount. of, as of tomorrow, yeah, Paramount tomorrow Network. it changges to the Paramount Network. I'm like, wait a minute, we already had a Paramount Network. It was yeah. called UPN, but exactly. that didn't work out. Yeah. My friend right. worked for UPN. That sounds dirty. No, he works UPN. at CW. <laughs> well, UPN is the CW. I know. I was going to say. Right. You yeah, know except for when... Well, is... no. Paramount was uh, UPN. Uh, the current CW was a merger of UPN and the old uh, WB. Right. The Warner Brothers right. Network. Yeah. Right. It was a merger of... Because uh, it was CBS and Warner Brothers merged to... For the CW. Yeah. Hmm. That's why Supergirl was easily so easily able to transfer go from CBS to CW oh, because it's still technically CBS, but Warner Brothers is more the face of CW. You know, I liked the first little bit of Supergirl, but I just can't get into any of those shows. The only one on the CW or, or whatever it's called now. Now it is CW now, yeah, but yes. you know, what, any of those shows that I've ever been able to get into are Smallville, and I think that's because I was much younger when it aired, so it's easier for me to follow. But I always thought it was super cheesy, you know. The whole what was the little blonde, the cute blonde that was like the uh, super Chloe. geeky Chloe? Exactly. Yeah. You haven't watched uh, Riverdale? No, is she in that. No, I'm no. just Riverdale's great. Isn't that based on the Archie comics? Yeah, it's great. It's like Riverdale and Twin Peaks. <laughs> I just it's like can't. Archie and Twin Peaks. I just can't. I don't know. No, you'd like uh, it. Luke Perry apparently is in that, right? Is yes, like a, he's, he's Archie's like a, dad. <laughs> that's so funny. Good and, old Dylan. And Molly Ringwald is Archie's mother. Molly Ringwald? Really? Yes, it's awesome. Is she a redhead? Yes. And she <laughs> should be Archie's mom's. No, she is Archie's mom. That's oh. what I said. <laughs> you said, I thought you said, never mind. I thought you were talking about Luke uh, Perry and Molly Ringwald are Archie's parents. That's what's the where... other? What's the other guy that's in the show? The uh, other than the uh, in the comic, Jughead. Jughead. That's what I thought you were talking about. I'm... Yeah, he's one of the uh, Sweet Life kids. The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Oh boy, he's one of them. There's just so cool. there's so much media. Yeah, there is. It's, hard to, it's hard to keep track. <laughs> Speaking of media, you saw some uh, media yesterday. I did. Something super... Top secret. Super Super top secret, but... I'm not allowed to talk about it. We don't even know how it is that they are having screenings for this movie so early, because it's a movie that doesn't even come out until December. Yep. 
Uh, so press, we were pr- press probably hasn't I even got come sent, anywhere near this. I got crap. sent a link from a movie buff friend of mine, and uh, we tried to sign up, and then we were like, basically, we couldn't. Um, and then I, she was like, try it again. So I went back in again, and success. Uh, so yeah, I can't talk about it. Okay, cool. I mean, I will, but yeah, I, I but I just I'm not supposed to. Uh, so yeah, they they let us know when we got there that we were the absolute first audience in the history of the world to see Mary Poppins Returns. Wow, in the world. Yep. Uh, some, Did you get a T-shirt? No, but oh. something like about a third of the movie theater was VIPs, execs. Um, the director Rob Marshall was there. I wow. ran. I ran cool. out to go to the bathroom right like right as it ended, and they were like. I don't know, stuffy, older, sweater wearing, like executive types were like all crowded around Rob Marshall, kind of like in my way as I needed to be really bad. <laughs> and they were like, You're the star of the night, Rob, you know, stuff like that. And it took me a second to go, Oh, wait, Rob Marshall, right? I don't know what he, obviously, I don't know what he looks like, but I don't either. Uh, but I mean, that's the only Rob I can imagine that they would be telling he was the star of the night. So, um, I, I wasn't, I'm not, you know, I just signed like a thing. I didn't read it. So, um, you know, I, I, I'll just talk about it anyway. Uh, it was really good. Um, there was some stuff that I didn't particularly care for, but, uh, not anything that would ruin the movie. Um, I gave it like a good eight out of 10. Cool. Songs are good. Tied in really well to the original Mary Poppins. Um, it's you know it's basically about the same family and Mary Poppins cares about what the Banks children right yep so that's why Mary Poppins returns is to take care of the Banks children. Um, it takes place. When did the original take place? What year? Late eighteen hundred. Well, no, it's uh, oh oh yeah, somewhere late twenties or something. No, 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 it was earlier than that because this is this one's supposed to take place nineteen twenties, I think. Whatever it is, it basically takes care of about 30 years. It's about 30 years later. Yeah, it's whenever the original was whenever it was that historical uh, suffrage was in England for women. It takes place on the same street. Oh, that band that plays at Tomorrowland. Yes. Oh, got it. Is there an admiral in the first movie? Yeah, the guy who shoots the cannon, remember? He's he's still there. Oh well. Lives next door. The house rattles every time they shoot it off. You know. Wait, so who has the house now? Michael or well, the, it's the same family. Yeah, no, Mike, Michael's in the house. His well, situation is a little similar to his father's. He doesn't live with his sister in the same house, does he? She lives nearby and comes over a okay, lot. Okay, so Do we Michael... want to be talking about this? or What? I mean, wouldn't people rather watch later than to know all the details well, you, right you now? Cut out whatever you feel is necessary. I, just, oh, no, I was just wondering who owns the house. Yeah, I know. I just... I mean, that's part of the story is like uh, who owns the house and what's going on with the house and stuff, so... Uh, of course, it's the man who gets the house. Well, you know, you got to get the down with the man, right? It's, uh, you know, it so, is England. But the music is good. The effects were a little unfinished. Um, well, that's you know, to be the, expected. Uh, there was... I wonder if that's even the the actual music. It's just super surprising that the score would be done this early. True. Because usually with movies, the score is usually done traditionally within the last six months of production. I saw, actually, we've, I felt like a lot of the original songs were play, being played in the background in the movie. See, so, that's what I mean. There's got to be missing music because traditionally, like a movie that comes out in uh, like a Memorial Day type movie, like in the old days when Star Wars would come out, mm-hmm. John Williams wouldn't even be doing the score until like December, like mm-hmm. less than six months until the movie's coming out. And All I know is that the scores are being done. We filled out a, a front back questionnaire and it seemed like what they wanted to know was how you liked the performances of the actors and how you liked uh, the beginning and how you liked the end. And did it drag in places or not? That's what they wanted to know. They wanted to know, did you like how it started and did you like how it ended? That was like, they asked like six different ways. The only thing I would say about the movie, but this is going to be the case for any movie of this type, is that it was like incredibly predictable. <laughs> but what do you expect, right? Right. It's a It's a movie that kids are supposed to be able to follow... You know, I think if you were nine, you might have been like, oh, cool, at one, you know, a couple spots when the rest of us are like, oh, yeah. I so you don't think that, that people are going to go watch and it's going to get a, like a Force Awakens uh, treatment where people are going to be like, it's just a remake of the original. It, it basically, I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't know if I'd call it a remake, but 
It's yeah, but at least close. Mary Poppins fans aren't similar. as hardcore as Star Wars fans. True, true. <laughs> um, I'm Mary There's gonna be nobody's gonna be asking for it, the movie to be stricken from canon. Well, I don't know. There probably will be. From there canon. probably will be people asking for that, but yeah. they they can, as usual, they can suck it. Yeah. So overall, you uh, recommend? I'd say go see it. I don't know if it's gonna be like a go see it six times situation, but. People will like it. Emily Blunt was amazing. Well, the, the the thing is, is is it worth the money to go at least see it once? Oh yeah. So I'd, there you I'd go. Pay. I mean, there I mean, go. I would swipe my movie pass for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd pay. I'd pay to go see it. If I honestly, I probably would. Again, we have movie pass, but I would probably pay to go see the movie a second time just to see the costumes again. The costumes were epic. And then, I mean, of course, you got to see if the music matches up or if it's different music from what you've seen right. and yeah and there was a lot the there effects. was there was scenes where like she's dancing around and the cartoon characters behind her are like uh no color like right. they're just penciled in right. kind of See, thing. that reminds me of like when that uh does anybody remember when that work print got leaked of uh wolverine origins Mm-mm. and it was a it like was the whole entire movie leaked six months before the movie came out but it had none of the effects shots in it in fact, for the longest, I don't even think I've actually seen that whole movie all the way through with the effects. I watched the movie a couple times with the that work print version, but I don't even Just know. All if of I've... a sudden, there's a storyboard with him going like this, you know, with the claws out. <laughs> no, a lot that of that kind of stuff thing. is there, but I mean, you know, a lot of the explosions and or some of the stuff at the end, like when they're fighting on top of the reactor, when he's fighting uh, Deadpool on top of the reactor, a lot of that stuff is there's uh, like mats and or like. Uh, Green screen in the background and stuff. What's it called when they really cool. when they do? Is it continuity where they, you know, they want to make sure the vase is in the same yeah. spot in each shot? Is that right? Yeah. There was a couple of things that um, us and the people next to us wrote on our forms. We brought up a couple continuity, like, uh, you know, there's one point where like she ties something around something, and then like that thing is in the shot for a while, and it's not there a couple times. Well, that's going to maybe have to be something we'll have to see if there's other shots that they can switch out in a, in, in re-editing. I think it's in a kind of a cartoon scene, oh, so, so they could probably they just, just draw it in. Okay. But it's, uh, I mean, I think that that might be one reason why they had they wanted to have 200 people watch the movie, was to see, does yeah. anybody notice little stuff like that? Um, I think there, I think that, I said this on the way there, actually, to, to Elizabeth and our, and our friend, um, that... Uh, I think that the studio probably disagrees with the director about maybe how or why it should end a certain way or maybe a couple of the elements. Well, that's not surprising. Look at the story. Look at uh, Rogue One. Right. And that they they basically were screening it this early so that they have time to fix these things. You know, if the studio says, oh, I want to do this version and the director's adamant, well, they're going to play that version for an audience, or maybe they'll play both versions for an audience, and they'll see which one was liked more or whatever. Yeah, I actually have um, The Mask, Jim Carrey. Yeah. I have a version of that at home with no effects, hmm. kind of like some effects, no effects, kind of cool. Mask wouldn't be very fun without effects. I know. It's crazy because uh, the one scene where he's in the in the lounge or whatever, the, the chick's performing, and then he goes like the wolf face and does the whistle. Well, you know his his face here, but he's like this, his right. arms straight yeah. out. So that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the the lips pucker up. Yeah. I love that movie. It's on VHS, not on uh, Blu-ray. Sorry. You have a VHS player. Back then, when the mouse came out, was in... no, but you still have one now. Somewhere. Oh, you know those are rare. You could probably get money for it. Probably not. <laughs> All right, so uh, Tim recommends to go watch it when it comes out in December, and uh, eleven months from now. Yeah, I I do want to see that. So we've been talking about that for a while. I now. just have uh, one question: uh, when the when the uh, dude bros don't like it, are they going to want a, an all male edit? <laughs> <laughs> you guys know. have seen that, right? The winds from the east, mist blowing in. <laughs> Something's a brewing about to begin. Again. You know, I, well, because she returns, I think about that in my head every time I look up over the castle and I see giant cranes. The first thing that pops into my head is miss, uh, is, is whatever I just said. I can't think of it anymore. All right. <laughs>
All right, moving on. I just wanted to mention real quick that, uh, of course, yesterday was the After Dark Party, the the $95 for a five-hour event that happened. And the, But the reason I'm bringing this up is the fact that Disney kept pushing it, kept pushing and pushing. Hey, you get your uh, tickets yet? Push it. Dude, dude. Oh. They've been, you know, just saying, hey, have you got your tickets yet? It's coming up. And, it, and, and when you see that, you know that it's not sold out. You know that they're trying to get people to buy tickets and get create more interest in this event. So I was kind of tripping out because that's all I see. And I'm like, well, when I see this, I know well, obviously it's not sold out. They keep, you know, mentioning it. And then they posted for APs, you know, oh, this is the button that you're going to get when you go to the event and blah, 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 blah. Get your tickets now. And that's on Wednesday. And of course... If they're posting it on Wednesday and the event's on Thursday, then it's not sold out yet. But I guess it did sell out. But there were tickets still available uh, at the door. So when you get to the parks, you can go to the booth and get a ticket. But, of course, you can't get them now because, you know, it, the party was yesterday. But I just wanted to mention that. that I, Does it, anybody know anybody that was going? Yesterday yes, or tomorrow? Yes. Actually. Was Lucas going? Probably not. <laughs> But um, seems like something he would go to. It does, but there are uh, Lucas our, Jenkins. Yes, yeah. No, but, but one of our listeners is Hi, going. Lucas. One of our he don't listen. One of our listeners is Maybe going. Maybe he'll listen now that we've talked about him. He doesn't know how to do a podcast. One of our listeners is going, and it will be later in the email. You'll find out who it was. But yeah, I just thought it was interesting how Disney kept pushing it, and uh, I guess it took all the way up to the day before for the the event to finally sell out. Yeah, we'll have to. Uh, See what we can find out between now and next week's show, just so we can have kind of a yeah. Hey, what happened? We'll we'll find out, and um, I'm sure our we'll, listener will email and let us know how the event. Yeah, went. hopefully we'll, we'll try and get some. Uh, hopefully they they go. We'll try and get <laughs> some uh, ideas or from both sides, from both cast member and right guests of how busy it was. Well, next week. Oh, wait, actually, next Wednesday, I'm supposed to do the void. The Star Wars experience. Well, we're but we Dan, podcast on but, Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking that I would have had some information, but Dan will have done it. Maybe Dan can write an email for us. Or we already had that already scheduled. Oh, what he's doing cool. All right. So I was on the at the parks on Saturday, and I, you know, we talked about the refurbs going on on Main Street and the pier and all that kind of stuff. People complaining because half of the park is closed. So on Main Street, you have the hub. That is all boarded up with the walls, and they're like I said, we're they're doing redoing the tracks for the the horse trolley, and then over in Town Square, the same thing. It's all boarded up there by the flagpole, but so, not in between. No, right now mm. not in between because they're doing those other places first. I oh. think the likely is that they'll switch, right? Oh they'll, yeah, of course. You, I mean, I don't think it's going to take them that long. You know, you block off the area, pull some truck up. Put some new ones in, and then you move on to the next. So they can area. move. They can move stuff in and out during the night, right? But during the day, there's guys in there working all day long. I didn't see anybody working when I went because hmm. we I were. I went on top of. Well, it was Saturday, so we were there. I went up on the main street on the train station, took a picture facing toward the castle. That's probably your photo that I saw. But uh, there was. What night were we there? We were there a few nights ago, and we could hear like dr- hammering and drilling going on. So, like on I said, it was show. Saturday, so probably not working on the Saturday because it's not like right. Star Wars land and got to work twenty four seven. Right. So yeah, they really working twenty. They were working twenty four seven on that. I don't know. Last time they were, but now I don't know. I made a big deal before Star Wars got even before they'd even broke down broke ground on Star Wars how. Disneyland and the difference between Universal. Universal got Harry Potter open fast, oh, yeah. and and Simpsons open fast because Universal has always had a history of working uh, people of working twenty four seven during construction. Whereas Disneyland in the past, uh, looking back at like Cars Land and everything previous to that, Disneyland has always had a uh, history of uh, not working twenty four hours. Why it takes them forever to Which get anything open? Taken for taken, yeah. Why it's nine like, to five, dude? Nine to five, right? That's what they've always had a traditional just hours, and they haven't worked twenty four hours. But the problem with that is you lose about thirty five or forty minutes on the front end every day. People arrive, they start slow. They have to figure out where they're left off yesterday. It's they don't get you know if somebody takes over for somebody else, 
they can say, here's where I'm at, pick up where I left off, and they go keep going. But, but you have to figure by now if, you know, to make sure they hit their deadline because they got last year's rains put them behind six months from what we heard. Oh, wow. The rains, the huge rains we had 2016 into 17, those rains put them behind six months. So you have to believe that, obviously, once they were able to get going back going after that, that it had to have been nothing but 24 hours or at least at least like 16-hour shifts or something after that. Well, I mean, realistically, they could work three, three uh, eight-hour shifts each day. Well, I think that's what they were doing. They would have, uh, that's what Universal always did. I think they just had like three different shifts, whereas Disneyland was just content with just having more people on one shift probably than having people just consistently working. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Plus, it probably gives them a little bit more uh, rain when you have less time, one less shifts. You uh, you have uh, a little bit more of a handle on who's actually overseeing because the more shifts you have, the more people you have to have overseeing. Right. I guess so, that makes sense too, yeah. So, yeah, so like I said, right there in the town square, you have the whole area where the flag is all boarded up and they're working in that area. And uh, the, so we talked about it last week that the flag retreat ceremony is not going on. It's on, on hiatus. So we found out a date that it will be back on February 19th for all you flag retreat ceremony people who love to go over there and chill and uh, honor America, like Sam the Eagle says. But he likes a two-hour show. Honor yeah. America and everything else. Uh, Sam the Eagle actually says in the Muppet Show at DCA, or used to be at DCA, it's still at Hollywood Studios. Sam the Eagle says this is a tribute to all nations, but mostly America. <laughs> exactly. <right>? So <laughs> he, in a glorious fourteen-minute uh, finale, almost two hours. And he says you have two hours. you have thirty seconds, right? Look in a glorious <laughs> two-hour finale. <laughs> so yeah, if you guys are interested in the flag tree ceremony, it will be back on February nineteenth, and um, hey, so I think that means that wall will be done by then. It might be down before then. I don't know. Who knows these things? But yeah, so I also went over to DCA to uh, go check out the pier, see how it's going over there since we talked about it last week, how in the video really couldn't see. I was there as well, yeah. Where things were blocked off. I said that the ice cream the, pier, the ice cream shop on the pier was blocked off. It's not blocked off. Actually, the wall starts a little further but the uh, ice cream shop is closed, though. It's closed, but it's not blocked off. Okay. What is blocked off, it starts right where, if you're walking up the pier past the ice cream, you see the four where pictures. Where the murals are, yeah. The very last mural is where it starts, and the wall goes all the way down, and then goes uh, up to, uh, you can go into the restrooms area and everything like that. And um, we did- Behind the carousel? Yes. Oh. So both sides of the restroom area are open. And if you're walking... But there's a wall around the carousel. Oh, no, there's no wall around the carousel because the carousel is open. Yeah, the wall goes down, and then it goes going like towards the um, the photo area where you buy your pictures after the roller coaster. So that whole area is blocked off. And like I said, you can go over to the restrooms back there or the other side by the Toy Story Mania, the store over there. And the you- wall starts again on the other side of the yeah. carousel. The uh no the wall starts again or on the other side of the bathrooms I mean no the wall starts again on um where um Mr Potato Head is so that area is all blocked off you can't see Potato Head and um, they have the line that goes in there somehow I, I think it's the the um, disabled line you know oh yeah the, the front entrance of the thing is basically fully covered because yeah. they're because they're redoing. Not the ride, but they're redoing the, the exterior. Facade. All the facade and the right. the look of that area is no longer going to be the same. Yeah, well, we already knew that. I just want to let everyone know that those two attractions are open. If you really want to ride the fish carousel. Yes, yes. You got to go over there and check that out. So, yeah, those two things are open over there. Something else is missing from Paradise Pier. Well, we're not there yet. Okay, I did Because it wasn't were... missing when I was there, so... Oh. Anyway, or was it? I don't know. I don't know what you you're know talking about. You know what we're about. talking about? No, but the, can... the other thing missing from Paradise Pier is the gondolas on Mickey's uh, Wheel of Death. Cool. Yeah, I got They're a picture They're like completely of that. gone. It's, it was interesting. You're like, wait a minute. All of where them? Yeah, all of them. Yeah, every that's single cool. one. Well, we talked about they're going to redo them. They're going to put... Yeah. They're probably going to get repainted. It's, it's just pretty... interesting to look up and go, oh my gosh, they're all gone. <laughs> but, I, but no one's I've... saying, oh my gosh, the loop is gone. Is the loop gone? Yes. Yeah, they removed it. 
Yeah. So is there going to be no loop? Or are they just going to well, like of course, put it back in? You take a piece of track out. Like, oh my God. Oh my God. There's going to be no more loop in this ride because they took it out. Do you have a picture without the loop? Yes, I think I'd I like, might. I'd like to I see might. It. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, those two attractions are open. Of course, all the food places on the pier are closed. They do have the cards out there with ice cream, cotton candy. And then I went over to the Paradise Gardens area. And there's a wall right there after um, where the parade ends. Yeah, basically where the parade ends and, um, and the big doors. Silly Symphonies. So where Silly Symphonies ends, there's a wall there, and there's a cast member oh, there. On the other side, you mean? Yes. On the lake side. More by the wall, by the wall where the parade ends. Right. So the two doors, and the then Silly Symphonies more the other way from the yeah, wall, but, but but there's a wall that goes by the Silly, right. Silly Symphonies where that little photo. Op is. Or no, 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 before that. There used to be a photo up there. No, it's, it's, all that whole area is closed. Oh, okay. So just letting you know where that wall is over there. And there's a cast member there, too. I didn't go that far to see what she's telling people. I mean, I don't understand why there's a cast member there when there's a wall. There's not a, there's not a way that someone can go around the wall. So the cast member say, oh, sorry, you can't go that way. Well, let's not forget the walls that were up over there and the one in. Frontier land. That Can I get through here? Kept, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I just want to let everyone know about that wall over there. and Or that uh, time when they had the wall up completely uh, closing off Critter Country and they had to have uh, yeah. cast members standing there because right. people kept trying to go through the back. Yeah. Really? Yeah, that time like three years ago when they completely closed Critter. I remember what you are talking about. Yeah, there was a wall there and they had to have put a cast member there because people kept trying to go back there. Because, you know, walls. I'd want to go back there, too. Or climb up and take a picture over There's the top, at least. people going back there because they're stupid. So then I was over at, I went to Paradise Garden Grill area, on the grill. Do they still have the ravioli? Um, I took a picture of the, um, that would be in the. That's in the Italian, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's oh. the Garden Grill. Oh, they're two separate places. They yeah. look like they're basically the they're same. They're connected, thing. but yeah, I believe they do still have the ravioli. But they uh, need I, to have that again. The Paradise Garden Grill was actually closed again. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it's just getting ready for Lunar New Year. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe they're I'm thinking gonna, maybe they're just not going to have it open. Maybe it's going to be like that one time where it was closed for a season. That one time in Band Camp. Yes, remember that time that uh, Paradise Garden Grill was closed for a little bit and then it opened back up. Yeah, maybe they're going to do like this. Maybe they're going to do that thing again. Then they used to do that way back in the day. Yeah, like uh, wasn't there season parts of the season when or when uh, Hungry, Hungry Bear? Bear wouldn't even open? Right, right. So I was just way thinking, back in the day. You know, it was, just, it was kind of weird to me because you know, like I said, it was a Saturday, and they were closed, and I was like, hmm. But I mean, they had they put the other menus back, you know, the regular menus for that area, but the falafel uh, or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. I'm not sure. I was going to check to see if they're open today or something. Maybe what day out. is uh, Lunar New Year supposed to start? I think that's the 26th. Yeah, I'll check. You keep talking. So, anyway, I was surprised to see that close. And uh, at that time, Elena was over there taking pictures. So, I went over there to say, hola, Elena, como estas? And she took a picture with me, and we were just yelling out uh, food items. <laughs> She was yelling out food items with you? Well, instead of saying cheese, mm-hmm. we said, Pesole, and I said, Quesadilla, and... I have a question. What? Is this a character, or is this a person you know? It's good, a character. Good Disney person That's here. what I thought. Good. Nice I just wanted to nice make sure job, for everyone Tim. else. You know who Elena is? I do. Oh, okay. Is it the princess of Avalor or something like yes. that? Yeah. Yes. Uh, the, way you dis- the way you had said it made it seem like you ran into your friend and that you were... Taking pictures and yelling at shit with each other. <laughs> well, if um, people don't know who Elena is, and we're talking about Disney, then yeah, yeah, you're right about uh, is the 26th, and they and they uh, they do have stuff planned for that. So obviously, it'll at least be opening up by at least the 26th at the earliest. Yeah. So I'm gonna actually check tomorrow and to see if it was open. I was gonna check it right now, but they're already closed anyway. The park is closed, but I was just it was like you know kind of weird and. To see that close when it's a Saturday. But anyway, I was just, you know, going around the park and checking things out. Took a picture, like I said, with Elena. 
And I think that's all I did. I didn't do anything else much in the parks. I uh, couldn't stay late because I had to go, but it was kind of cool. It wasn't that crowded. It wasn't that bad for those people who are like, how was the park? How crowded is it going to be? But yeah, it was pretty cool. And um, expect to see a lot of other things changing in the pier, of course. You know, big refurb. They're going to retheme it. And people are going to think, oh, my God, this is gone. Oh, my God, I'm so sad. And blah, 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 blah. Let's start a petition. But yeah, that's what's going on in the pier. That's what I saw. So just let you guys know that you have two attractions that are open in the pier. So you don't have to worry about that. And yes, World of Color is going. Yeah, it's not part of the pier. And uh, Little Mermaid is also open too. I'm just saying that because for some reason, someone's all, is Little Mermaid open? Well, I don't understand why it would, wouldn't be. It's not on the pier. And well, I can not... see how people would ask that because it's always closed. I guess so. And real quick, speaking of Little Mermaid, you can get fast passes for Toy Story Mania over there by Little Mermaid where they give out the fast passes for World of Color. So if you guys want a fast pass for Toy Story, go over there, the little little things that they roll out, you know. Moving on. All right, so we got word that the world of Disney and downtown Disney is going to get a remodel. Big like makeover. a major remodel, right? It's major, I guess. It's... They're saying it's a 10-month project. Oh, really? That's what cast members have told me. Yeah, only because they're probably only going to close to certain sections at a time. Otherwise... Yeah, they can't get away with the full closure of that store without a major loss of profit. But they're supposedly they're going to do one section at a time or two sections at a time. And maybe Yeah, maybe... they're going to be... It's going to stay open, So, but you know what's going to happen with that? It's going to be crowded in there. Right. You know, it's already crowded enough with... Trying just to go in there and just to look around. And now, you know, them doing this and closing sections off. <laughs> so we, especially people with strollers. Oh, boy. <laughs> I know us. We, we, we'll we we'll walk through the store instead of outside just because it's like more stuff to look at. Right, right. So I don't know if we'll be doing that. <laughs> yeah. <But laughs> it's, it's interesting. They're doing a lot at once, you know. Yeah. They're doing. When is this supposed to start? Do you know? It's going to start. Uh, they said. uh Mid February, so middle of next month, World of Disney is going to start a potentially eight to ten month project where they do one, maybe one room at a time. Yeah, because it says work will be completed in phases throughout 2018. Right. Guests can continue to shop in the World of Disney stores during the construction. So they've got that. Plus, uh, I'm hearing rumors now that as soon as February or March that the construction will be begin on the new hotel and that the back half of the back half of downtown Disney is going to be completely shut off. Really? Yeah. They were originally saying like end of summer, but now a lot of the cast members are hearing that it could be earlier. Hmm. I also did, we were at Earl of Sandwich on, uh, I believe it was, uh, Oh boy, was it yesterday? I don't know. A couple days ago. And, uh, we had to pop in. We decided to have dinner at Earl Sandwich and I asked, if they knew the closing date uh, to see like, you know, when they, and, sh- and the girl told me we're not really closing. We're just moving. And I said, Oh, are you just taking either ride makers or build a bear, which are now both closed? And she said, yeah, one of those spots. So I don't know if it's true. Cause when I asked the other person about <laughs> it, they were like, Oh, your guess is as good as mine. But well, if that's true, all I got to say is I called it. Oh, I totally called it. I mean, I, I called it and hope, was hoping the whole time. It's like one of the best cheap pla- I mean, I don't want to say totally cheap. We spent 38 bucks to eat there yesterday a couple of days ago for three of us. But reasonably priced food, you know, if they're moving locations, they may not have, like, seating as much over there. But at least they would have, they would have a, be able to have people get sandwiches to go. Which, which location of those two do you think would work better for that? For that business, for Earl, ride makers or build a bear? Ride makers because, uh, well, I I say build a bear because they could have seating upstairs. We can go up to that's eat true. To, as like a. I was gonna say area. ride makers has more room outside if they wanted to out an outside seating area true, like what they true. have now. But yeah, if you wanted to have the upstairs, upstairs just isn't accessible for everybody. But they do have an elevator in there. Well, then there you go. 
go upstairs with my up up an elevator with my sandwich. Well, oh, speaking Ooh. of right makers, right next door was the hat shop, and they closed that down. That's that's now the dress shop. They got the it's but the, that's temporary too. The dream boutique. Well, that's why I'm glad you brought that up because I'm hearing that stain. What is the dream boutique? The, the, well, the dream boutique is the old. It was. It used to be the the dress up your little girl shop, and then it became the frozen boutique. No, that's on no, the other side. Now it's the, the opposite side. And now it's the dream boutique. No, that's the opposite side. This is isn't the dress shop where the hat store was. The dress shop is where the hat store was. Right across from the vault. Right. Which is where now the downtown. Which is where the void is. Right. Right. But which one are you talking about? The dress shop or the dream boutique? Because the dream yeah. boutique is the frozen, is the same frozen shop. That's on the other side. Is it the same thing? In my opinion, that shop is always empty. I don't know the, why they're going to keep... Before Frozen, it was uh, 16365. That's right. Yeah. But it's basically the place where you go to get your... Outside right. the park to get your kid dressed Okay, up. so then that's two different places that I'm talking about. Then. Okay. All right, well, I'm hearing that dress shop is staying. I think it That was supposed stay. to be temporary. That shop is... It, the vault was always packed, and this shop is well. The vault packed. was packed because there's no room in there either. Right. Well, that's true. This I went in is, there once, yeah. and I was like, "No, I'm not coming back in this place." Hey, what's the uh, deal with Marceline's? I don't know. Too? I heard about that yesterday. I heard about. It. I saw a picture. Oh, was it today? Parks and Cons posted the picture today. Oh so, yeah, today. That you can't see through the windows anymore. Oh, that they've covered the windows. Right. Well, may, what makes sense there is that they would take. They would leave the shop up, but they would bring in the candy apples and stuff from in the park kitchen, and they would take that section next to Marceline's where the where they make the candied apples, basically their kitchen, and they would open that into another store. They're going to need to get creative in downtown Disney. I mean, they're they've only got so much space. That dream boutique is always empty. And the fact that they've got all these businesses that are well, especially moving if and they're need trying locations. To, especially if and... the rest of downtown Disney has to now absorb the West See, End I of downtown Disney. I haven't been down there in a long time. True. I mean, because they, if they're going to even attempt to, you can't, you can you can move Earl of Sandwich to either build a bear, build or, a bear or ride yeah. makers, whatever, but you can't move ESPN. No. You can't move to a, you can't move ESPN to one of those plots. You can't move. Uh, rainforest to one of those places. No, both those so businesses are, are either, history. Either they're history or they have to go inside of the hotel, which well, I think... Which uh, will be a later thing anyway. Well, I don't... No, they could they could be built in initially. Uh, I think that uh, I would almost say that, that uh, Rainforest is probably guaranteed to be in the hotel. Maybe. That's what I'm guessing. It would be similar to the one that's inside of uh, MGM Grand. Right. That makes sense. I don't know if you've seen the, that uh, one. I was also of the opinion, this is this is just me speculating, they just built that second Starbucks location there. <laughs> There'll and, be one of those inside. Well, I think they're going to maybe put a pop-up in the Disneyland Hotel. Oh, maybe. Just because they put that there for the hotel guests. Well, basically. plus, we obviously, when we originally talked about the whole new hotel thing, we, we speculated about how the lower levels of the connecting part of the hotel might still have shops. So oh, it's possible that they're. Percent, Lee, it's possible that the Starbucks will end up in one of those lower level uh, areas. I just meant in the meantime, like oh, before, in the while, meantime, while yeah. that's all being built. You know the little. Well, yeah, um, especially if they're still concerned about all those guests having to walk all the way down downtown Disney to for get their, their coffee. coffees. Yeah, but you know, you know the store when you go, you go into the main Adventure Tower of the hotel where the lobby is, and before you, from the back side, before you get to the lobby, there's a small hat shop directly to your right across from where the stairwell down to the bathrooms is. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That store very e- easily could could be gutted and in, in three weeks turned into a temporary Starbucks location. I've seen them at like SeaWorld and stuff where they're like, they have their products and they can make some of their drinks, but not it's not a full menu kind of thing. That's just my opinion, but it well, would make sense. Yeah, so like you said, I guess... I was wrong with the Dream Boutique. It's two different spots I was talking about. I okay. thought it was where that other thing was. So that is, like you said, that, that opened already. And then uh, we talked about the, Wait, so which one is in the hat shop? The dress shop. The dress, the dress shop. shop. I thought it was the it was same thing. Chapel That's ha- the dress shop. Chapel Hats was. Right. right. We, yeah, that didn't last very long. No. Well, they got kicked that out. That was just a filler business, sure they basically. Did. Yeah. That's what I was saying. I don't understand because they, they said that this whole that whole area was going to be restaurants. 
Right. These, these place these places sign anywhere from a five well, to a also, ten to a fifteen year lease with Disney, and if Disney wants them out, they simply buy out their lease. Well, yeah. They just they say, "Here's your." When they first uh, said that those were all going to be restaurants, it was before the hotel announcement, so it's entirely possible that they were just saying that, and that in they all of that space, those places were those rest those. Those businesses were being kicked out specifically to absorb other uh, places, things maybe like uh, Earl of Sandwich or things like that that they know make more money. Well, yeah, because Build-A-Bear, I mean, as popular as Build-A-Bear is, they only pay so much rent to Disney. Right. And the last thing here is about the new Disney home store. It says it will be opening in February. So, And that's where D Street, D Street was. was. So, that's It's just so many, so many changes over a short period of time. I mean, by the end... By the end of summer, they'll be full blown in construction, and I think, and most of the shops will have moved. moved that was locations. actually the first time we had heard anything about an opening uh, for the for the uh, home, home store. store. Before it would just said it's coming. Yeah. But then buried at the very bottom of that article about the uh, what's the date? Just February. Oh, okay. Buried at the very bottom of the article about the other thing was uh, just oh the home store is opening in February. Yeah. I wonder what they're going to have. I mean, is it basically just going to be like that one section of downtown Disney where they, and I mean, I've, I'm assuming it's that they're be just like gonna... that one section of that one little section of the Emporium that has right. like all the, that has like all yeah, the, the Bed Mons, Bath and Beyond stuff. Towels. Right. It's going to be like towels and it's gonna be bed, China bath and, Beyond and, Disney. and forks and spoons and knives and whatnot. It's going to be Bed Bath and Disney. Bed Bath and Disney. There's no Beyond. All right, uh, now real quick. Speaking of restaurants, new restaurants coming. This has nothing to do with Disney or downtown Disney, but a Crackle Barrel is coming over oh, to my area. Cracker Barrel in Victorville. No, yeah. where Rialto. So you're closer what? than Victorville. Yes. When was that announced? I saw it in a thing that uh, you know because Rialto is building up now. Right, we're, we're taking a, a we're taking we're a trip to Diggs House. We're getting uh, you know big movie theater and all this stuff and um the habit. And then I saw Cracker Barrel. I was like. Oh, so because well, the, the Cracker one, Barrel the opened in Victorville. That, or one, yeah, that one's now opening. Or okay. it, I think wait, it's either now. Month. Oh, it opens I in February. Thanks, so. Cracker Barrel. They have in Victorville, and also there's a Steak and Shake in Victorville. I've been is, there. That's been open like this two is years. like the full size. Oh yeah, I agreed. But it's the full size one. The only ones you can find in LA are like counter service, oh. so they're a little different. Uh, if you want the real Steak and Shake, though, the real deal one, you got to go to. Uh, uh, just past State Line um, in Vegas, but it's right before there. It's on the right hand side before you get into Vegas. They have a steak and shake at like you know it's a casino, but it has a center with movies and all this stuff. Uh, I forget the name of it, but they have the full menu. Whereas the counter service locations in L.A. and even the full restaurant in Victorville have been their menu's been chopped. Um, I didn't know that. Also, if you buy. Stick and shake in L.A. It'll cost you three times as much as it will in Ohio or all I know Florida is or that I'm, else. All I know is I'm, uh, I'm waiting to see. I want to know what they're doing, if they're going to keep all the same prices on the uh, Cracker Barrel menu. Oh, that's rough. Because, yeah. Everything costs more out here. Yeah. Because if you... True. Cracker Barrel in uh, Arizona <laughs> is, yeah, way cheaper. I mean, Cracker Barrel is not an expensive place to eat. But, hey, those grits, man. Grits. You can kiss my grits. Kiss my grits. Uh, They're okay. That's exciting, though. I'm glad you. I'm glad that you told us. His grits are okay. Oh, no, I mean just being <laughs> grits in general. Oh, okay. Uh, Cracker Barrel grits. So, when, when the only thing we didn't talk about downtown Disney is the um, Splitsville is opening pretty soon. Uh, I think next month. Really? Yeah. It's is that pretty much. Too? It's pretty much complete. The uh, I've seen video of the inside. They've got a bunch of cool stuff. I take it the fire didn't set them back at all. I, I, I don't not. remember. That was a while ago. That was last but month. The, really? Yeah. I just saw a video posted. It looked like they're near complete. But surprisingly, they only have nine bowling lanes. It's kind of like a lucky strike at the block yeah. situation or Hollywood Boulevard right there. They have a lucky strike, too. It's small and expensive to play. Uh, I'm sure it's you get the best, better equipment, though, right? Brand new bowling shoes, brand, brand new yeah. bowling balls. They just tweeted out about uh, Splitsville. Was it last week or week before? Yeah. It was like there was nothing. It just said early 2018. I think it's going to open in late February, early March. But again, by the time they close Earl and Rainforest and uh, ESPN, 
they're going to need that place to be open for the overflow. Oh, it'll be open well before those places close. Well, if they start construction in March on those businesses, they're going to shut, I mean, in that whole area, they're going to shut that whole thing down. Where'd you get nine? This says 20 bowling lanes on the article. Uh, I watched, there was a video they posted. It's two state-of-the-art kitchens and 20 bowling lanes interspersed throughout. Maybe they were saying it's just on the one level. Maybe on the one level. Are you hungry? Well, they are. It's time for Fat Time in the Parks. Fat Time, Little Coat. Fat Time, Lunar New Year. Yeah. Seaweed. (laughs) All right, so we got the menu for the what's it called? Uh, Lunar U- Lunar New Year Festival over at California Adventure. Basically, their way of saying Asian food. Yeah, it's the year of the dog. Roo, roo. Oh, oh right. who let the th- dogs out? I thought it was the year of the corn dog. It oh is, man, it is. It is. is it? You, okay. read, you read that wrong. Because I was gonna oh, go wait. get corn dogs. Oh, oh. Yeah, you were wondering why there was no corn dogs listed. In I, I was wondering. Like, I thought you're the corn dog. I don't see a corn dog on this uh, this food guide. So yes, for the upcoming Lunar New Year celebration at the parks that it will be running now at the parks, it'll be running January 26th through February 18th. Of course, we've heard that. Uh, it's not really only la- overlapping with the. Uh, I read that it's only overlapping with the actual Lunar New Year for the last three days, which of course is really bad planning on Disney's part as usual. But there will be once again food offerings, and they will be having the little marketplaces again for this because you said they had them last year for sure. I don't remember seeing them, but maybe I didn't get over there for Lunar New Year. I don't remember. I wouldn't mind getting over there. The vegetable fried rice sounds good. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to try and read any of these actual names. I'm just going to tell you what they are. There's definitely some. Uh, but uh, over by Little Mermaid ride, which we were talking about earlier, if it's not catching on fire, <laughs> it will have the Korea marketplace in front of it, which will have some vegetable fried rice, steamed vegetables, dumpling. Uh, sweet red bean and raspberry jelly. Red bean is good. Non-alcoholic banana milk. Banana milk sounds awesome. Plum wine cocktail. Well, real quick. I didn't know bananas had nipples. Just they saying. don't. Just like. There's different ways to milk things. Well. Yeah, you've seen Last Jedi. <laughs> That's true. And then over there in front of the Golden Zephyr will be the China Marketplace. Do you think that that the blue milk tasted like like seaweed, like sea, like it was from Wait, the seafood? The blue milk or the green milk? Whatever, whatever Luke was drinking. The do you think milk. it tastes like it comes from the ocean? Like it's got taste like fishy? Probably. Like salt water, right? Is it fishy is my question. Probably. Like salmon. <laughs> tastes like fish. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on. Yes, yeah, so over at the China Marketplace, as I said, in front of the Golden Zephyr, they will have pork soup dumplings with black vinegar and ginger. I'll give it a shot. They will have a three-cup chicken, egg tart dessert, five-spiced peanut brittle, and a passion fruit green iced tea with lychee popping pearls. You know, they had that last year, and it was the, the popping pearls were the part that I was kind of interested in. I wanted to try them. Uh, the drink itself was the sweetest thing I've ever tasted in my mm. entire life. It was like they put, they were like, oh, it's pretty good. Let me just add like a half a bag of CNH. Pure cane sugar. Yeah. Yeah. And then also in front of the Golden Zephyr, they will have the Vietnam Marketplace, which will have sticky rice cake with pork. Yum. Sugar cane shrimp skewer with sweet and sour sauce. And I'm not a big fan of sweet and sour sauce, but I always like shrimp skewers. A purple sweet potato macaron. Yeah. Which in the picture is looks like just like a purple macaron. <laughs> and then they have uh, Vietnamese iced coffee. Now over there by Paradise Gardens, they will have their cart that they have every year for uh, Chinese for Lunar New Year. That uh, with the pork bao or with the steamed bao. And then the three mini almond cookies. That's also the cart they've always usually have the bread, but I don't see any. Did you see any? 
I don't see any mention of the bread on here. Are they not doing the bread anymore? Remember they always had the uh, the the boudin bread shaped like the uh, they not they're not gonna do a bread shaped like a dog this year. They might. I don't know. I know they've been mentioned. doing a lot of bread shaped like things. They always do bread shaped like things, so that's why it would they've be surprising. Groot now they've done uh... right. I mean, every year they've done the the bread shaped like whatever it is, the dragon saw... or the or the last sheep. year I think it was or the... two years ago they had the cock shaped bread. Yes, and mm-hmm. then last year I think it was the uh, the sheep, wasn't it? The sheep or whatever it was last year. Yeah. So well, I, I don't. I didn't see the sheep, but I did see the cock shaped bread. So uh, the uh, the cock had his doodle do, and like it was like feathers out. Yes, I remember thing. that one. Yeah. It was very brown. Well, the bread is like a brownish right. sort of tan. Yeah. The uh, so if they're gonna have that, it would probably be on that cart along with the bow and the almond cookies, and then uh, of course deadpan. Go ahead. Of course, we mentioned earlier about the Paradise Garden Grill being closed, but it will most likely open back up with for... eth- ethnic foods of sorts. Yes, it will. Uh, no, it will definitely be opening back up because there is a whole menu here. There is a whole crispy tilapia with chili lime vinaigrette served family style with soup, vegetables, and rice. They're having tilapia. Interesting. There is a sweet potato noodles, onions, shiitake mushrooms, carrots, spinach, snow peas, broccolini, and lightly ta- sautéed. Oh, they lost me here. Tofu. Hard pass. <laughs> tossed with sesame oil and blah, 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 blah. Hard pass. They have a short ribs marinated and grilled Korean style and served with steamed rice and, rice and kimchi. Got me back in there with that one. You like, you like the kimchi? Oh, <laughs> uh, no, not kimchi. The short ribs Korean style. Oh, Ooh, yeah. I love Korean ribs. Uh, They got pho. Pho what? They got pho. The beef noodle... Soup with seasoned beef stock, thinly sliced tri-tip, and rice noodles with classic accompaniments. So, yes, your typical uh, Vietnamese pho. And then they got marinated pork belly, pickled carrots, and daikon with cucumber, cilantro, seasoned mayonnaise, and jalapeno on a crispy baguette. Oh, so it's basically a uh, Vietnamese sandwich like you would get at Lee's. Oh, I like Lee's. I like Lee's. I like the... um. The large mung bean sesame You're balls. You're a mung bean. It's the, ye- <laughs> the yellow mung bean sesame balls are like my, they're the business. And the egg rolls are really good there too. So I have a question now that we're on the Asian foods. Oh, I was Do, done. Hold on. There's oh, a mango please, pudding. Please keep going. Oh, no, that's, that, that's the business. There's an almond milk black iced tea with pudding, which oh. I don't understand uh, with the pudding part. Interesting here, there's a black beer stout. Not feeling it. So, oh. as I throw my iPad at him, what was it you were going to say? Well, the, the the Chinese restaurant in DCA in the Wharf. Right. Do you guys like this food? I've never actually eaten there. I've wanted to, but I've never actually had it. I'm not a fan. Uh, some I know some people that are, but I know in the past, last year or a year before, a lot of the stuff that they were selling at the Paradise Garden Grill was just repeats of stuff they were already selling at the restaurant. It's nice to see they're actually doing original oh, things. Oh, the, the Mexican food. Well, no. Well, that too, but they were doing it again for Lunar New Year. Was, they were selling some of the stuff that from the oh, wow. Lucky Lucky Dragon, is that what it's called? From the Lucky Dragon over there at Paradise Gardens, just making it look like it was different. But. I think I'm going to just go to Lucky Walk around the street from my house in Paramount, and uh, that's really yummy. Six bucks, six six and a quarter, six seventy five, depending, you know. And you get a whole like lunch combo, two scoops of rice. It's more than just like random pieces of chicken slathered in whatever sauce you choose. It's a business. Now, what about the Thai people? They're not represented here. I know. I uh, was wondering that because uh, you mentioned that there was four marketplaces last year. Was there? I could only think of those three, but I thought I remember four stands. Well, because it's interesting that they, uh, I mean, yeah, it's just the Korean, Chinese, and Vietnamese, but I thought there was other nationalities that they, you know, they have always those signs and stuff. As far as the food goes, I know Elizabeth and I are big fans of the Thai. We have a great Thai place down the street from us, but I mean, we would be, we'd be down to eat Thai food there as well if they would just serve it up. All right, so also announced reservations are open for the food and wine festival for those 
special events they have going on where you have to pay money to Robert the, Irvine. Yeah. Chef Guy yeah. Fieri. So I'm gonna go through the list real quick. And well, we'll start with Guy Fieri, which will be at the Hyperion. So this year they're using the Hyperion Theater. Instead of where the frozen yes. interactive whatever. Yeah, is. stage seventeen. Do you think that is that building stage seventeen? empty right now or do you think that frozen stuff still built up in i'm there? sure the frozen stuff is still in there because they were doing that dessert thing for the show at hyperion oh so i don't i mean i'm sure they're still in there but i'm thinking that they're gonna be able to make more money to, you know charge you know to totally get more people in there so guy Ferrari will be uh, at the hyperion on march 9th robert irvine will be at the hyperion on march 30th and then it says here here that there's a Disney Family of Wines dinner that's going to be on March 29th. It doesn't say where it's going to be. I'm going to guess at the Carthay Circle because the next one says David Arthur winemaker dinner at Carthay Circle on April 5th. Then there's a Carl Strauss brewmaster dinner at Steakhouse 55 on March 8th and Floral Springs winemaker dinner at Steakhouse 55 on March 15th. So, like I said, they're, they're a little different now because I don't remember anything going on at Steakhouse 55 last time. And if they're doing these things with, you know, Guy and Robert at Hyperion is so they can make more money, get more people in there. And you know what, too? Last well, year, they only charge, it's like 30 bucks for a group of like 30 people each. Right. And then the rest of the people just go in free to watch the, That's what watch I was the say. presentation, but so, they don't get to taste any food. But now they can't go in there and watch the presentation. If they're going to do the Hyperion, you got to have a ticket to get in, right? Uh, well, the, I mean, the Hyperion's huge. I know. So they could have most of the audience just be viewing, and then the first section is, Maybe. Like, is like the people that paid, and they, they'll they bring your stuff down. Uh, and, and then you're supposed to be able to meet the chefs and get a... a Picture, pictures, and whatever afterwards. Right. You know, I'm sure no, I'm just thinking about that. I mean, taste. Yeah, maybe if you guys want to come go watch, then you get to climb the stairs and go watch from up there, and you can't be on the uh, what do you call it orchestra level. But yeah, interesting that they're using that instead of stage seventeen this time around. Of course, there will be demonstrations. Last year they had them, of course, at uh, the back lot stage. So there'll be the demonstrations over there how to do desserts, different things like that, uh, gourmet dinners, and, of course, uh, wine and beer pairings with those gourmet dinners. I like, last time I went, I got to see uh, them doing some desserts with uh, Disneyland Resort uh, head pastry chef. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, of course, if you um, are interested in attending those events, of course, there's an additional fee on top of your park fee if you don't have a... AP or anything like that. It might be. It doesn't have the prices here. All right. The Food and Wine Festival will be from March 2nd through April 12th. Yeah. If you are interested in going to those events with Guy and Robert and all that that I mentioned, I would say go head over to our Facebook page. The link for all that will be there. Or you can go to Disneyland.com, hit the events tour link. And it will, all the information will be there for that stuff. It looks like Guy Fieri is sold out. That was not a surprise because that happened the very first time it came around. Robert Irvine is sold out on the 31st, and I don't even see Guy Fieri on the list anymore. His was the first one. Right, and that's why I'm thinking it's gone. Yeah. All right, well, whatever. You guys go check it out, see what they have available. Maybe you can go do those dinners at Steakhouse 55 and at Carthay Circle. Yeah, his was the first was March 1st, Thursday, and now March 2nd is the first one that it lists. Oh, okay. Um, which I'm a little upset because I wanted to go, and I should have got it. I should have jumped on it right at that time, but I was waiting for some friends to get back to us to see if they wanted to do it too. So, yeah, go check that out and see what they have available. And, of course, the other demonstrations that are going on in the, in the back lot, you don't have to pay for anything. You can go watch them do those things is really cool. It's fun. And of course they're gonna have the different marketplaces with all the different types of food. And they haven't released anything about what food they're gonna have yet. But of course when they do we'll be especially Anthony will be all over that to see if they have the same stuff as last year or 
Maybe they might have the same stuff from Festival of Fatness. I don't know. Ooh, pork belly. Maybe they'll have those tacos again. Ooh, those tacos again. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll let you guys know what they have for the Food and Wine Festival. And hopefully, I like tacos. I've never been there. And hopefully they'll have some desserts I can try. Do you have a special occasion coming up? Looking to personalize your trip with a keepsake? Create customized buttons for birthdays, engagements, family vacations, even bridal parties, or just because. Check out buttonsbydigs.com today. Buttons by Digs, Buttons by Digs. Remember, those are buttons, not pins. All right, so like I said, I was in the parks on Saturday, and on Friday I heard that they came out with a annual pass holder popcorn bucket for DCA side. Yeah, it's it's not blue. It's like a brown gold kind of color. Yeah, I call it like a bronze or a copper. I think you were closer when you said a copper because yeah. once I saw it in the light, a different picture in the light, it's a lot more copper looking. Uh, it, it has a different color scheme on the stripes on the side or a little bit more of a earth tones. Yeah. The imagery and, is different. Than... And then the imagery, it has a Goofy instead of Donald. That's Ooh. why I, I actually got it. And I got it because of Goofy. They are... I mean, they are interchangeable. They'll give you the refills either at either park. Yeah, that's nothing. So if you buy the DCA, well, nobody wants still popcorn get... from DCA because their popcorn is gross. First of all, what? Their popcorn <laughs> is cooked in completely different kettles, and it's it's always more burnt than Disneyland popcorn. I don't like DCA popcorn. That's interesting. I didn't. I've never noticed. <laughs> we don't usually get the fills in in DCA though. We that's would get why. them filled in Disneyland. Uh, I mean, we've bought popcorn buckets at DCA, but. Nonetheless, I just want to say real quick that I posted a picture of the bucket and I had one bucket and behind the bucket picture was Thunder Mountain. Oh, and the other bucket picture, My favorite. the other bucket picture behind that was Carthay Circle. So then I got people asking, where do you get the Donald bucket at? Hmm. Let me see. Stupid questions of the week. What's behind the picture? So yeah, I just you thought, get it at uh, Magic Mountain. Exactly, should have said that. So, so yeah. you went with Michael. Three hundred sixty-five days a year. Just yeah. head on over. Michael, so, Michael will be waiting for you. Exactly. So I, I'm sure you guys seen the pictures on our social media as I posted those. Riding Twisted Colossus with his baby, and um, of course they're fifteen dollars with refills are a dollar. We told you you have until February something to get the bucket, and then you can get refills until March first. And you need to refill seven times to break even. So I thought it was interesting that they actually released a DCA version late. I mean, we know they didn't. Again. But the other one was understandable why they did the other one late was because the Guardians of the Galaxy right. ride wasn't open yet. Right. But I wasn't expecting a, a DCA version since the Disneyland version came out already. And, of course, it wasn't until today, Wednesday, that Disneyland AP actually announced it finally posted it 10 days after they had already been been selling and already half of the way through the through the period in which you could buy them yeah they finally announced them typical failure on disneyland social media part i just want to note about popcorn buckets that anybody that has not gotten did not get a oogie boogie that they keep popping up at the uh, New Orleans, at New Orleans popcorn stand, Peri- as early yeah. as early as le- at least as late as last Friday, yeah. I saw a post from your Disneyland popcorn buckets guy that they were at uh, at the uh, New Orleans. So if you it's just like, if you like happen to be keep... at the park, go and you don't have and you wanted the uh, oogie boogie, that's there first. Just yeah, head over to uh, the uh, popcorn by Haunted Mansion and check there. Because apparently they keep popping up and they keep finding cases. I don't know what's happening. They're popping up like popcorn. Exactly. It feels like they're like finding cases of them. Yeah, oh, they... wait, look at this here. Let's put it out for sale. But it could just be that they found a truck of them and they've been little by little. Right. They always cut off the, the premium buckets. Not always. They often cut off the sales of the premium buckets like at 4 or 5 p.m., 6 p.m. during really? the day. Yeah, they did it there in New Orleans. I mean, the the Oogie Boogie buckets when they first came out, they did that. If you didn't get them early, you didn't get them. 
Well, that's like remember the day I got my Oogie Boogie that they didn't have them at the one in uh, on Buena Vista Street, but then you said go to the one all the way over by Midway Mania and they right. had them there still because right. people don't get over there. Yeah, I don't want to walk that far. Right. All right. So of course you guys know that ever since Force Awakens, that Disneyland has been coming out with their uh, the Force for Change charity item which is usually when it comes out is the very very first mer- piece of merchandise for that movie and there's always been a pin and a shirt at least now uh i have all three pins so the uh merchandise for solo is now over at uh i believe in star trader and in launch bay they have the force for change merchandise i know that for sure that they have a shirt because i've seen the shirt it's just the uh, the yellow solo logo, like on the poster, and then it says "Star Wars Force for Change" in yellow on the arm. This shirt is also at World of Disney on the Starbucks side. Okay, good to know. So, and on the far right, where the Star Wars stuff usually is, then yes. And uh, uh, as far as uh, do you, have you seen if there's a pin? I haven't. I don't know. There are I don't, I don't know about for solo. There's there they had pins for Galaxy's Edge. Well, I'm not asking about no. that. I'm asking about solo, the Force for Change pin. Haven't seen it. Yeah, I've seen the two Galaxy's Edge pin. I'm not a big fan of the uh, the AP one. The flip. The it's just the regular one with a flip on it added to it. So it's pretty point. It's pretty stupid to me. Some of but this stuff is an after. Oh, oh, yeah, basically it is. It's just the it's just the concept art of the Millennium Falcon that they re- the original concept art re- was released and then just thrown onto a pin. So I'll wait for. Uh, I told him I'm the the pin that came with the lanyard is is the best Galaxy's Edge pin out so far, to me. And that's why I got it. That's why we got it. We got the lanyard because the pin is the best thing, and the lanyard's really cool too. But uh, yeah, so getting back, um, my plan on want to go to the want to get over to the park to check on the pin because if they do have a pin, I want to make sure I get it because I. Uh, last time, though, the pins have usually stuck around for quite a... I mean, it, geez, it must have been probably March or something by the time I got the last Jedi pin, Force for Change pin. So they, they those usually stick around for quite a while. The Force for Change shirts usually stick around. The only thing the problem is, is that sometimes you have problems with sizes yeah. where they only end up with certain sizes left. Right. I know uh, you had gotten a Force Awakens one, but you I don't remember if you didn't get a... Any of the others because they ran out of sizes or because you didn't like the way they looked? I just didn't like the way they looked. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> as far as the solo one, any interest in that one? I I don't know. I actually haven't really seen it. I seen it, but I didn't pay attention. Like I said, it's just like the poster. It's okay. just black with the yellow. On the solo. Solo, big giant okay. solo on the front. I don't know. I don't know. He doesn't know, folks. I think the people that go to Disneyland by themselves are going to be buying and wearing these shirts. I'm Doing sure. a solo day. I'm just... I'm Has a... anybody ever done a Disneyland solo day? How is it? How is it when you do your solo day? I, I was think thinking about like going, but thing. I don't know if I should because I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. Have you ever done a solo day? <laughs> what do you do when you do a solo day? Oh, it's awesome. You can do on any hey, should you we, want uh, to. Should, should uh, they... Uh... Ask Disney if they would do a Disneyland After Dark for solo for uh, singles, singles night, <laughs> singles after dark, after singles dark. night, singles after dark. That's when the fur guy shows up. <laughs> do you have any fur coats or <laughs> feather boas? So, if you guys are interested in those Force for Change merchandise, if you have had all the other ones, or if you want to get those, or a big fan of Solo, make sure you guys get over there and get them. Maybe I'll get over there and check them out before uh, the trailer finally shows up. Yeah, when's uh, that just a happen? note on the trailer. That's, wait, hold on real quick. That's funny because it's like the trailer hasn't shown up yet. You know, yeah. right? Exactly. The trailer, <laughs> the trailer hasn't the trailer shown up. Trailer hasn't shown up yet. But uh, so do you? Do you think they're going to make us wait to the Super Bowl? I think it's Super Bowl. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, traditionally it's Monday Night Football early mid January, right? Early January. No, when the Monday Night Football is done in December. Um, Don't oh, argue with me about that. Okay, maybe you know better about the footballs. I do. Okay. You want to stare about it? No. <laughs> I was waiting for you to talk. Uh, I was waiting for you because you were staring at me. I was um, staring at you because you are talking. You want to stare about it? 
we're staring. No one's yet to blink. <laughs> I'm going to fail. I don't know what's happening. Ah! You did a trance. That, but if you say bacon. <laughs> How long can you hold it for? I'm about to fail. <laughs> yeah. I I won. That's the first staring oh contest gosh. I think I've ever won. Yeah, it's the first one I've ever been in. It's stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's totally stupid. But what are we doing here? Okay, what were you talking about? Um, what were we talking about? I don't know. Super we're Bowl, about so- Super Bowl solo trailer. trailer. You know more about the footballs. Well, first the rumors were that it was going to be with the national championship game. That obviously didn't happen. Yep. And then there was rumors that it might be this Sunday. Or actually, there was rumors it was going to be last week or something. I don't know why people were saying last week, but uh, there's other rumors. I mean, at this the, point, we're two weeks from Super Bowl. At this so. point, there's other rumors that were saying it was going to be during one of the games this Sunday. But I think that we're probably banking on the Super Bowl because it's definitely not going to be the Pro Bowl. Well, the nobody watches. The, the only Pro reason Bowl. for them to not do the Super Bowl is that why would they need to spend that kind of money? Right. Unless they think no one wants to see this and we need to get it out to a huge audience. Uh, we have well. You know, if I those guess- stupid rumors about them expecting uh, how Solo to fail, then they that would be along their lines of wanting to get m- maximum exposure, since Super Bowl is traditionally one of the most watched events of the year hands on TV. Down, yeah. Hands down, so. Oscars, Super Bowl. Yeah, that's and they, much they're it. not going to wait for the Oscars because that's like in March, right? Right. Yeah, that's, that's too long. And too far. And this is already we're already well, well, like into danger zones of. It's unprecedented for a for a trailer for any trailer, much less the Star Wars trailer, for us to be less than six months out from a movie and there's no trailer. Does a highway go through that danger zone? Does the highway well, no goes but it goes to the danger zone? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's unprecedented. Do you do you guys believe any of the rumors that the movie's going to suck? I don't believe. Do any. you believe that the tr- it's true that he can't act the main uh, whatever his name? Well, is. I don't know who he is. I mean, no there's... one knows who he is. <laughs> I mean, I believe all the the people that think that the the kid from uh, Baby Driver would have probably been better. Maybe true, yeah. I mean, Donald Glover, the guy that's playing uh, oh, Mondo, yeah, Lando no Calrissian, problem. there's is, no problem with him. He's awesome. Woody Harrelson isn't Woody Harrelson who's he supposed to be? Uh, he's supposed to be Han Solo's mentor. Okay, so Woody Harrelson's kick ass, obviously. Yeah, and especially after having just recently finally seen him in uh, the Hunger Games movies. Oh, you finally saw those? I finally saw those. Wow! And a big uh, step. And uh, if he's anything like he was in those movies, I he's think br- he'll be, he was uh, he'll brilliant be awesome. in those movies. Right, he was so. really, really good. Wait, did the last one already come out? No, I'm just kidding. And there's a couple other people that are like good anchor actors too. Uh, the the Queen of Dragons, Mother uh, of Dragons, oh, and she's amazing. Uh, the Daenerys Daenerys Targaryen, yes, um, otherwise known as Sarah Connor, yes, otherwise known as you don't know her name. I, I mean, forgot, neither do I. I forgot her real name. <laughs> uh, she's amazing too. Great actress. Who knows who she's gonna be? Right. Who knows who she's gonna be? So I mean, some early love interest of uh, Han Solo before you he. You know who's Leia. the most interesting character that's gonna be in the movie? Who? Chewie. No, I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> and then that's the question: Is Chewie? Do you think Chewie's gonna be the same size, or is he gonna be like an adolescent Wookie? Why would he be adolescent? Chewie, Chewie's know. like eight hundred years or two hundred years old or something like that. Oh. A difference of like fifty years is not really that big on him. Maybe they'll explain look, how yeah, Han they, knows how to speak Wookiee. Well, supposedly you're supposed to see the meeting of them. We'll see yeah, how yeah. it plays out compared how to what, what, what's been established in the lore, but... Supposedly, yeah, they're going to they're gonna touch on the Wookiee um, race being used for, like, slave labor right. and a lot of that stuff. Uh, just to note that uh, just yesterday that the, a bunch of... Uh, there was a press... Booklet or something went out to uh, whoever it was that press booklets get sent out to, and there was the press. Bunch, there was a, a bunch of uh, synopsises for uh, Han Solo or for Solo had a synopsis put out. Uh, Christopher Robin uh, from Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, the movie Christopher Robin that's coming out. Oh, and uh, what are these synopsis? Um, Ant Man and the Wasp. Along with a photo, there was a photo of Ant Man and the Wasp that was released, and then uh, what else? There was Rick something else. Rick oh, Rick Ralph. Ralph was one of the other ones. Yeah, so there was a bunch of synopsises. What did that the were Solo say? Basically, what we were talking about. Basically, that it's going to show how he met Chewie. 
going to show how he got the Falcon from ha- or from Lando and just basically adventures. Well, you want it in a bet. Well, we, I mean, you know, we're it's like the prequels. It's stuff that we we've always had ideas of how it happens. Well, now we get to actually see it. It should be cool. I mean, here's the thing. They're saying the Disney's planning for this movie to bomb, but if you've even got the same, I mean, the fans are the fans, right? Do you think that anybody's going to really not go see it? They may not go see it three times in a row like all we the, have all been. All of the uh, dude bros that didn't like uh, Last Jedi. Well, yeah, those people are like, oh, I, I, I went to see the second one or if never, anything, they never might, again. Or if anything, they might actually go see it because they know that there's uh, you know, a bunch of dudes on dude, Solo bro. and Lando. Dude bros are right. in charge of are in are uh, going to be like, oh, well, you know, forget this. Uh, the girl's in it, but she's not important. The way I see the situation is that you've got maybe not $2 billion worth of fans that love Star Wars individually, but out of that number, you probably have something like one quarter that equals the actual number of fans, so $500 million of revenue of people that are going to go see the movie once. And that's not a bomb any way you slice it. I mean, I'll just say this about it. They're going to make $300 million. I'll just say this about it in reference to something that came up in a, in one of your posts about, uh, it's Ron Howard. We have to have confidence in Ron Howard because he made a bad movie. That was the point I was getting to, because in your post, it was the point was made. You made the point that Ron Howard has not really made a bad movie. I mean, even is it the worst Ron Howard movie really even that bad? I mean, if you want to look at the movies like somebody in the post far and away, yeah, it's not a great movie, sure, but I mean, you know, and Tom Cruise, but I mean, you know, overall, it's a pretty movie. <laughs> you never, never seen it. I know, you've probably never seen it. Tom Cruise. And... He watched Star Wars The Force Awakens for the 1100th time instead <laughs> of that movie. Which probably would be a good choice. Yeah. Well, yeah, I wouldn't watch Far and Away either. I mean... You have, though. I've seen parts of it, oh. enough to know that I didn't want to watch it because Tom Cruise... You're a, you're a denier. <laughs> well. <laughs> All right, moving forward. There's Tom... Ron Howard is the guy we're talking about. Yes. Not Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is a nutter. Right. Ron Howard is a skilled director and uh, an amazing actor if you even like it, Happy let's Days. Just say, let's even his Hopey. Exactly. Let's just say even his worst movies aren't terrible... I mean, even Beautiful Mind isn't that bad, you know. It, but it, you know, it's just what about once the again, it's, it's Russell Crowe, Apollo Eleven. That's Ron Howard. That's a great right? movie. What that's are you a talking fantastic about? movie. I saw that one. Yeah, we saw it in the theater. <laughs> were you guys like thirteen or something? What? No, thank you. Just kidding. No, we were in our twenties. Good times. I would go with thirteen. <laughs> I haven't known him that long. Shit. Thank you. Only his brother has. Speaking of solo, it's time for the mail. Michael probably wrote in, so at least we'll have that. Well, our first email is from Giselle. Woo! I'm excited because there's an email from someone else. All right, so she says, Hey, Mousepire, I'm all caught up, caught up with the new episodes, and I feel bad for not writing in before. I went to Alaska to visit my family for Christmas. Alaska? And, yeah. Whoa. And got is there back, a Disneyland up there? No. Oh. And got back last week. I went to Disneyland last week with my tia, and it was so weird seeing the walls up for the reconstruction. I'll miss the flag retreat. I'm excited to see what the new improvements look like. It was pretty dead on Friday, maybe because it was so cold too. I was really looking forward to throwback night. I bought two tickets for me and my boyfriend the day they started selling. Sadly, he won't be able to come, and I'm forced to either go alone or Selling one ticket or just selling both of mine. Diggs will go with you. Will you guys be there? I would go. <laughs> well, you should. I mean, this will air after, but you should message and just say, hey, I'll go with you. Why? Well, you know, I don't want you. I'm, I won't steal you from your boyfriend. Right. I'll, be, I'll be respectful, but I want to check it out. She actually didn't write an email. She sent a message to us. Like, hey, like I've been yeah. saying. So this is the hand I give to Giselle. So yeah, I mean, because she asked, "Will you guys be there?" And I didn't reply to her. Say no, we didn't think it was worth it. So I hope she goes. I hope she does sell at least one of the tickets. Yeah, and get her money back, and then go. So so she can tell you about it. Yeah, so she can, uh, you know, message. Because otherwise, us. all we'll have is reports from Autopia. 
I just want to say that uh, every time he, uh, she emails, all I can think about is Giselle from Utopia. Oh, 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 exactly. oh, oh, me too. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I, I don't know why. I, I like that song a lot. Hire me. That one, right? Oh, 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 oh. I, I like Shakira. Yeah, me. I like her. So, yeah, uh, hopefully you go and you can tell us about it, see how it was. But it was nice hearing from you. I'm glad you enjoyed your trip to Alaska. Yes, thank you, Giselle Gazelle. Exactly. Was it cold? We'll have to find out in your next message. It is Alaska. But seriously, send a message. You Although she said it was cold. She said she went to Alaska, and then she went to Disneyland. So it, was it was cold. cold. Uh... So that's... <laughs> <laughs> Her standards for cold must be pretty uh... No, cold. It, if you're from California... And it gets cold here. It's a different kind of cold. Well, that's what I mean. She it's must have not, really been freezing in Alaska then. Well, but it's it's like in Alaska, you know it's cold. You're wearing thermal underwear. I don't know. Are they in the dark times extra, right now? Or extra is it... layers. When it gets cold here, it's almost a little unexpected. And you're not wearing that extra layer of like pants or, th- you know, uh, tights or whatever for girls. You're not wearing that extra layer for, uh, of shirts. Tim? Not for me. La La Rue? And that's my girlfriend. You said you tried them on. She likes. Well, she made me try them on, so <laughs> we'll see. I mean, they felt they feel nice against the skin. <laughs> don't ask, don't tell. Yeah. Uh, nonetheless, I. Uh, yeah. It's different here when it gets cold. We don't we don't expect it to be like you know it gets into the 30s or 40s here. We don't expect it to be 30 or 40 degrees, and we're still dressed like it's 50 right. and there's a big difference all right so our next email comes from someone else who hasn't written in in a while yay can you guess who it is michael the mail guy jake from state farm no i wish jake would write in one more guess no it's not michael dan the man who hasn't written in in a Na- while fancy nancy yes fancy nancy it's about time where you been she says i'm alive that's thank, her subject thank goodness nancy she says, hi, kids. Hope you are all well. Glad you are back on the mend to me. I'm trying to be, uh, trying to get better, but yeah. He'll don't. get there. He won't be dead anytime soon. No, 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 no. <laughs> he just had to have a permanent sack. Yeah. No, I won't. You should see this sack, Nancy. No. It is sackalicious. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it in the next episode photo. No, I won't. <laughs> That's gross. No, I won't. All right. So episode 108. We went to Disneyland for the Christmas season, and we didn't see fireworks either. Nope. Our kids didn't miss it at all, but apparently lots of other people were super bitter. It turned out well because it thinned out the crowd. So we tried to go to the baked potato place on our visit. Ooh. I want baked potato. Troubadour? Yes, Troubadour Tavern. What do they have there? Bacon sauerkraut. (laughs) Where is this place? Troubadour Troubadour Tavern. Which is where? Uh, magical map. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. She says, but it was closed. Is that only seasonal? On a side note, I see what you are saying about some cast members. We talked to people at the guest podium, and they said, yes, it's open. We walked over there, and guess what? Not open. As far as uh, that goes, usually it's open during the show yeah, only. Yeah, it depends on what time you were there. If you were there past the last time of the uh, magical map show, then they close. As soon as the last magical map is starting, they'll close. Well, or when it's over. Is it have, oh, is it when it's well, over? Well, we were walking by when we said, you said, uh, remember she was saying bye? Oh, bye. after it was, it was over? over, over. Oh, it was over. Yeah, and we okay, were walking, yeah, and she's right. saying bye. The window, that's right. The door was going bye. down. So, yeah, as the magical map's closing, they're also, they also close. Yeah. So, you have to make sure you're there during magical map hours, if you want to say. Yeah. So... Show times. Yeah. Is that kind of like when they used to do the pork shank over at the uh, Fantasyland across from um, across from Matterhorn, where they do the chimichangas and stuff? They used to do a pork shank over Ooh, there with bar- with barbecue. It was basically looked like a turkey leg, but it wasn't. It was a pork shank. It was big enough for two people to share. But turkey legs, in my opinion, the, theirs are not, they're not that good, but the pork shank was amazing. They don't have them anymore. They would sell out every single day. They'd have them for about three hours, and they'd sell out, and then suddenly they'd stop carrying them. Hmm. I don't know. I've never seen those. 
But it would be the same thing where like you would just show up and they'd be like closed down. Oh, oh we sold out. Yeah, we haven't even been up to Troubadour Tavern in what seems like forever to mm-hmm. verify even what's on the menu up there anymore. Yeah. They might not even have the bacon sauerkraut for all I know. Mm. All right, episode 109. Bingo. Olaf's Christmas. She says, yes, for a 30-minute cartoon on TV, no for a cartoon before Coco. Coco, no review of Coco. What's up with that? There was not a dry eye in the house when we went. Although after the movie, my kids were super bummed. They said, I miss grandma, my mom, and yes, they did win a Golden Globe. Um, There was no review because I still haven't seen it. So that's why. Dirty. Well, I don't have transportation. Hello. I can't get anywhere. And they, and they haven't built the movie theater by your house yet? No, not yet. It's it's basically actually barely going up. Oh. We, I drive by it, and they have the the cement, whatever. You know how they put those cement walls up, and they hold them up. And I thought, actually, I thought it was going to be uh, the Burlington. The coat factory? A.K.A. used to be Coke factory. Now That's it's where they Burlington. make coats. But now it's just Burlington. Oh. So I thought it was going to be that store, and then I finally saw a map of that whole area, and that's the movie theater that they're building. So yeah, as soon as that movie theater is open, I can go over there and uh, get, a, get a movie pass. I can review all the movies. <laughs> How far do you have to go to a movie now? I have to go to uh, Ontario Mills or Rancho Cucamonga. Oh, that's not that's far. Damn, really? To go to the movies? Dang, it's yeah. like ten far. miles or something, right? Oh like yeah, that's miles? far. Oh, yeah, because all the that's other far. theaters closed. Because I mean, they used to have that one right there. Yeah, ten miles is far. Well, yeah. Is that crappy theater on uh, ten miles is the by distance Eisenhower. from the Valley to Santa Monica? That crappy theater by Eisenhower closed a long time ago, right? Yeah. And then uh, that crappy theater by the freeway in Fontana. That's that w- still there. Oh, is that still there? Yeah. Well, that's closer. I, don't, I wouldn't go there. You said it's crappy. I'd rather go to AMC <laughs> and Rancho Cucamonga. Well, true. All right. Episode 110. She's covering the distance. Yes. She's going for speed. Is that what it is? Yeah. Exactly. All right. Um, She's all alone in her time of need. There you go. All right. She says, Luke appears. I call BS on Tim. Luke Perry? Talking about Luke Skywalker. Oh, Every thought, everyone thought it was really Luke when he appeared at the end of the film fighting fighting Kylo Ren. Or am I being cynical? Ha ha. I mean, I noticed. I didn't notice right away that it was uh, apparition, but once he was standing outside, actually battling Kylo, I noticed that the lightsaber that they had just broke was hanging off of his off of his belt. I noticed that his beard was more kept and i thought well how is it that he's younger all of a sudden in right? retrospect after seeing the movie now three times yeah. after the third time scene and and actually studying that scene yeah i actually uh i kind of poo-pooed you at when we did our when we did the review about that you were like there's not possible it's you not possible know. that you could have known but you know and now in retrospect i i don't see how i sh- you shouldn't have known i didn't know that he was straight i mean I don't know what I said at the time. But there's things I know now that I didn't know then. It has been pointed out, number one, that the door on Luke's hut is part of the wing of the X-Wing. First of all, the oh. door the door that Chewie kicks in isn't part of the structure. It was added by Luke, and it's part of the wing of the X-Wing. Okay. Going by the markings on it. So that's number one, which means that if he's missing part of his wing, he's obviously not going to be flying out of there. It was obviously... You know, it's hard enough that his the X-Wing was underwater much less to have part of its wing taken off that and kicked in by Chewie. I had not considered that part. Uh, number me. two, number two, uh, if he knows he's about to go into battle, he's not going to take the time to use some, some just for men right. on his beard. He's not going to trim his beard and then use some just for men. He might trim his beard just to look more... Uh, pure. What if it was just for Luke? It wasn't just for his beard, though. It means his hair, it was all... Well, I know, younger. but specifically the the yeah. beard was more was trimmed back just for men, and it was all dark. Whereas obviously, while he's on the island, he has a completely gray beard. Yeah. So unless he's used some just for men, uh, basically it's those two things. Those are two big things. I mean the and then the, the, the outfit he's wearing, you don't see him wear it at all on the island, but that don't mean nothing because he when could have, he could have been like, all right, I'm doing it. I was I I think it's weird, really weird. Something that I noticed uh, was that. Uh, when by Ray, the way, spoilers. When Ray shows up, <laughs> he's wearing the really nice Jedi robe. Yeah, and then in Last Jedi, immediately after throwing the lightsaber over his shoulder, you see him go back to the hut, and then he takes off that Jedi outfit and puts it down. And you see him patting it down like all nice, like he's about to fold it up and 
put it away in a right. trunk or something. And did he put that on just to meet, meet up her? with Ray and then throw it the lightsaber over I his think, shoulder? Okay, I think that he wasn't they standing had... on top of that I, that place for a while, just wearing his his good whites. <laughs> I think that that's just a for posterity for the movie kind of thing. They had to have her meet up with him. He had to have the look of the Jedi when he she handed it to him in the end of Force Awakens. And then they had to sort of explain why he was taking it off. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, I think it's just one of those things that they did in Force Awakens, and Ryan Johnson was like, well, I guess I have to tie up that loose end. But anyways, yeah, opinion. so getting back to the whole thing, yeah. I, you know what? I agree with you now after having seen it that based on the evidence, even without the, the whole feet thing well, or any of that stuff, which I didn't really notice the feet thing as much as I even looked in all the places where he, you don't actually, they don't actually shoot his feet, so you don't actually, they do it intentionally, so that way you don't know that he's not making marks right. on the ground. Except for those two or three times. Well, no, you don't, not at all. I looked every single time you move his feet, and he's either already standing on top of the part that's already been burned away, or they don't even shoot his feet when he moves, so that way you don't see him not moving. But then they specifically show... Uh, Kylo Kylo's feet and uh, moving the salt away. I have a memory of they there's a once or twice at least where Luke like follows a, a sweeping leg movement that Kylo did and doesn't make a. But anyways, the point is is that I that I agree with you now that we all probably should have figured out that it was fake. But the fact that so many people didn't realize that it goes just to goes to show how well Ryan Johnson shot that whole scene. All right, so the next thing she says is, Luke Melking, uh, you didn't say much about this. We, was, sure, we talked about it today. <laughs> was it because you were as disturbed as I was? It's pretty disturbing, and we talked about it today. Do you think it's, Do you think that the, the milk would taste fishy? <laughs> Are these sea creatures, or do they just live by the sea? I mean, there's all these questions. Nancy, you're thinking the same thing I think everybody is. You, you have nothing, yeah. I mean, clearly he was. I was gonna say I was gonna make some reference. Does it, does he live under in a thing under the sea or something? Oh, no, he's not the Little Mermaid. But, I was gonna say uh, like SpongeBob. But. I think that he was intentionally. I don't think that he went out there every day and milked these things. You know, he maybe ate the fish, and the fish lasted so long. I think he was. I think he was doing things that he does like over a certain amount of time. He was like, doing it all right then to right. show her how gross he was. He wanted to look not hero at all to her. He wanted to appear to be. The most disgusting dude ever. All right. Last thing she says is, did Shadow break up with the podcast? Well, we haven't talked about this. It was kind of mutual, but yeah, that's about all we're going to say. I want to say about it. Considering he doesn't say much anyway, and then when he was here, all he did was be on his phone. True. I can so, vouch for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's all we're going to say about that. Yeah. Let's Dig, just say it's a decision. Diggs didn't that give him a ride at some point, and that's, then things just fell apart. All right, well, thank you for your email, Nancy. Yeah, nice Nancy, to, thank nice you. Nice to hear from you again. Did Nancy email, or did she write in a message? No, it was email. Okay. She's doing it the old school way. Do we have a third email? Is we it, do have a third email. Do we have a fourth email? Yes, we do. Oh, my God. I'm so excited right now. Well, yeah, <laughs> me too. It's finally happening. <laughs> it's all happening. All right, so this one's from Dan the Man. Dan. Yay, Dan. All right, as a subject line, is spirit shirts and rose gold anything? Yep. Well, the rose gold ears are currently sold out again. And he says, are stupid. Yes, they are. Hey, guys. Dan here. Super, exci- super excited to do the Star Wars Secrets of the Empire experience this weekend. I will leave a review for Mospire. TFTI, Dan. <laughs> JK. He said, made it not once, but twice to the parks last week. Half of Main Street is inaccessible and... The worst part is no popcorn carts on Main Street. That's true. How am I supposed to get my one dollar refills? That's that's the one thing I was gonna say about the popcorn is that you have to go to Frontierland or to uh to uh Matterhorn. Uh, I guess yeah, Matterhorn or Matterhorn Frontier or Star space. Tours Space Mountain or by Space Mountain. Yeah. Well, no, because you can't get the. Uh, can you get the AP bucket yes. at Space? Also? Yeah, they have both. They have both. Okay, and okay. I've heard that they have Tie Fighters again too. What? Yeah. They have all, th- all three. So, I mean, I, I know Dan's just messing around. No, no, he that, is, but, but, it, but, but, but it makes but, it more but, difficult. But, but 
you're walking around using that anyway. What what what's the no, big the, deal about? Oh line, my god, I gotta walk over here. No, the but, line at the Tomorrowland popcorn cart was 25 minutes. No so if joke. you go to D- D- DCA, you have no lines over there. True, you get your refill true. for a dollar. Yeah. In yeah. fairness, though, just to go back to last summer when we had the uh, AP popcorn West last summer, what were we doing every single night? At the end of the night, we would get a popcorn refill at the one in the hub or in the uh, town square. Right. At the end of the night before it closed. Well, you can't do that. So, oh, that's well, that was my point is that, you know, they're offering so the, ones, the dollar refills, but it's they're making it more difficult. <clears throat> the popcorn stands that stay open late are the ones that stay open the latest or the ones that aren't even open is the point I would be making, because the ones that we talked about are all ones that sometimes close early. Right, he goes on to say the other lines get long, especially still for the AT or the ad ads. The off season is little is a little busy, but not bad. Got my new Haunted Mansion press quarters and watch Fantasmic again. Sorry, Tim. I'm sorry you had to watch Fantasmic again. Question: The hub and the flag area are currently walled for rail replacement. You can still walk around both sections. How do you think they will hand, handle center of Main Street, which is more likely for congestion than the current area? So basically when that area is shut down. Uh, it's such a small little stretch. They may even try to just do that overnight. I, or just do little. I know what you're saying. They might do little sections at a time. Yeah. Might yeah. Like just like put up a little like a 10 by 5 for, or 10 by 5 foot wall or something. Or whatever thinking, it yeah. takes. That's how but, when when I first talked about this uh, repaving the street and stuff like that, that's what I thought. They just do little sections at a time like that. So yeah, they maybe they'll do ten feet at a time or. Because at this point, are they are they repaving also, or are they just doing the tracks? I thought it was repavement. I thought it was going to be involving repavement too, but it now it makes it sound like more. It's just the tracks. I believe so because then you would have more of the hub and the town square. Right. Closed well, the off. whole thing. I mean, yeah. I mean, unless the whole idea is you're gonna you're gonna do the center and then you're gonna do the outer. No, you would do the outer first and then the center, if anything. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So it's more looking more and more like it was just the tracks, which means it's gonna be a little bit less scale than what we originally thought it would be. But then again, at the same time, it's a little bit more scale than what we thought it would be because we weren't expecting the whole entire town square say to be walled off. Yeah. I would have thought that if anything, they would have just uh, walled off little just the tracks itself and still allowed you to get into the center. The overflow area on the west side of the back of the stores, while the opposite is walled the whole way, but gets congested by first aid. Any thoughts? Okay, she's not talking about the other one, the one on the west side. Then she's talking about the east side. He. Dan. Or he oh, sorry, that's Dan. <laughs> Dan's talking about the east side, then, if he's talking about by the first aid. First aid would be the east side bypass. Oh, okay. I see what he's saying. Well, I mean, obviously we know that the uh, the the west side one is just backstage. That was just allowed. People are allowed to go back there, and then they just put up a scrim, so you can't see the Jungle Cruise backstage area, training area, right? Whereas the other side was actually built specifically for what it's being used for, right? So, I mean, yeah, they didn't really have much choice to have it come out there by the. I mean, obviously, the things would be a lot better if the uh, if the if the corn dog cart wasn't there. Ooh, the corn dog cart is what causes it to be congested right there because of all that seating, the the corn dog cart itself, and then yeah. plus that seating that's right. behind it. Well, they just redid that whole area. <clears throat> well, right. Now, I mean, but it doesn't look any different. Like double. Yeah, but it doesn't really look any different. It's still the same. It still sticks out the same amount. So when all those people are coming out of the uh, bypass. Like they're all coming up, right. and then they're just going. Basically, if it weren't, if you didn't weren't careful, you would end up into the popcorn or into the uh, corn dog cart. Yeah, because then you make that hard left there, and then immediately you you got the people trying to come from the other direction coming into you. So yeah, that one's a lot worse. But you know what? The other one ain't any better because you come out, you come out of the other side right into the uh, co corner seating, which to me is even worse. That's or the, you don't come out, but I mean, yeah, you're, you go you're, through, in you're there. trying to go through you the co- funnel your way in there, funnel your way through the co- corner seating to get yeah, into it. So yeah. at least the other end of that one comes right into the town square. So I mean, I mean, how they, is he asking if about using them using those during the uh, work? Because have you, has anybody seen them using those? 
I haven't seen them. I mean, as long as they're doing not doing the middle of Main Street, I don't think they will use those. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. I I I mean, originally when we talked about them using those, was when we thought that the whole street was going to be closed off because they were going to repave. Yeah. Now with it only being the middle, I don't think that they will use the bypasses. I mean, unless uh, somebody has seen them actually using the bypasses during yeah. the day. All right, he says, see you at the next parade. Dan out. Wow, that's a long time. I know, I was thinking the same thing. Damn, April? We're going to have to have a special Saturday podcast just so Dan can come. I know. Huh? Ooh, I'm just thinking about food already. That's... <laughs> All right, next email is from Michael, the dirty mail guy. Dirty. Michael, the mail guy here. Nothing much to say since I have not been at the parks. But I can talk about SeaWorld and how I feel bad for all the animals. Wait, one more time? He feels bad for the animals at SeaWorld? He's on that... that he's been watching Blackfish too yeah, much. Yeah, he's on that bandwagon. Man, I just want to make it very clear that the animals at SeaWorld are some of the best cared animals in any zoo or animal like place. animal place in the world. And Blackfish is a load of yeah, horses. I agree. I agree the, with the, that. It, it, very compelling, but... Uh, I mean, these these animals would not survive in the wild. It's not like they, you know, know how to hunt for their own food and just, stuff. Just, I'll just say one thing: orcas last an average of about thirty to forty years in the wild. In, no, in captivity at sea at, at uh, Sea Worlds around the they l- usually less than twenty years in the wild. Oh yeah, well they've I they've believe. got they've got whales that are over fifty years old. Well, in that's captivity. what I mean. Yeah. yeah. All right. So he says, hope to be back in the park soon but don't know when don't forget to support the podcast, share the show with everyone. We need some listeners and emails time for the dirty award. A dirty award goes to Tim once again. Yes. Just because I don't have no, no dirty. Award he never today. has anyone. I'm the default. Uh, I give the Coco award to Michael <laughs> for only going to drive in movie theaters with crappy projectors. Um, this is the Coco Award. It's a hat that he's going to have to wear every day forever. Ten bucks a month, bro. You can go see as many movies as you want. You can take your screaming baby in with you. <laughs> All right. So he says, when are we going to have another Magical Memories? I don't know. I haven't thought about it lately. We'll probably uh, get on that pretty soon. Uh, have you visited Star Wars Launch Bay and seen the Star Wars Land section of the model? If you have, how do you feel about the future of this new land? I know I haven't been over there to see the model, but I saw it at D23. Yeah, it was awesome at D23. I think it's only part of the model. That was Is it? D- I went in there, then I completely forgot to go over and look at the model. I just was looking at the merchandise side. and uh, But apparently now also that there's... Uh, I don't know if we mentioned it on here before, but the, where the, the one room in Launch Bay where they used to have Disney Infinity, uh-huh. I believe has been now converted to Lego. Oh, oh, that's cool. Now they're showing Lego. They're playing. They have Lego games in there now. That's cool. But there's uh, two full size uh, Lego. Uh, uh, a um, the aforementioned Luke from the end of Force Awakens slash beginning of Last Jedi. Uh, there's a full size Lego Luke, and there's a full size Force Awakens Ray oh. in that section now of Lego. But yeah, those things are now Lego. I gotta go check that out. I was just in the building a couple days ago, but it's. Uh, I, I think the two Lego I only went to the store. I think the two the two Lego the big Lego characters I think are new, but uh, I remember hearing some time ago about them changing over uh, the the Disney Infinity to Lego. I believe. Well, uh, it was. Uh, I just completely forgot to say anything about it before they did that. It was uh, just it was still a video game. Like one of the Star Wars games, it wasn't Infinity anymore. It was just like okay. Star Wars games, okay, or Xbox. So or yeah, I think I've heard that now. It's Lego over oh, there, and that's cool. why they've added those two new Lego things. But as far as the model, no, I I went in there and I completely forgot. But I believe that it's only part of the model. I don't believe it's the full model that you saw at D twenty three. Well, I want to go and check it out. Yeah, I want I want to go over there anyways because check out other stuff. All right, random question. If you can change things on the right you dislike so you can enjoy the interaction, what would you do to them? What attraction? The one you dislike. Hmm. In other words, he's asking me what I would change Buzz Lightyear into. Uh, I would add loops to the Haunted Mansion. 
<laughs> loops. Loops. Oh my gosh. That's why they took the one over at the cuff for screaming out. Right. <laughs> it's better than how I mentioned. Refurb right now. I don't know. I. What ride don't I like? Oh, I know what ride I don't like. I have to say Goofy Sky School. It hurts me. Yeah, but you can't retheme it to make it not hurt you. No, you can. What would I change? I would say change the seats. Oh, change it to to not hurt you. Yeah, I don't think that's even possible though. With a with a uh, what do you call it? Mouse, mouse coaster. Mouse coaster. I think mouse coasters are specifically created to hurt you. So I don't know if it would even be possible <laughs> to do anything with the seats where it doesn't hurt you. Sort of. No, there is a way. Added there, more, they've added padding. No, no, what? Okay, I don't know if you notice the seat goes like this. Oh, the little hump, yeah, yeah. for your for your ass. Well, yeah, kind of. The non-ass hump? Yeah, it hurts. My hump, my hump. It hurts me in other places. Oh. That's what I'm saying. That's why. Oh, okay. yeah. I thought you meant the whole bouncing no, around. No, no. I'm talking about... I remember when it was still Mole and Madness, they had added padding because of people getting bumped on the yeah, sides. Yeah, no, I don't care about that. This is an issue with uh, the Matterhorn now and, as well. You remember when Mole and Madness first opened, there was no padding on the side walls, and then they added padding on the side walls. So but, I'm, yeah, I'm going to say that. I can understand if you're talking about the bottom. Yeah, the bottom. Oh, yeah, Matterhorn would be a good one. Why don't you uh, put uh, Matterhorn back the way it freaking was like 10 years ago? Right. I'd like the original cars the back. The original right. cars back, please. Now, Michael the Mail Guy's tip of the week. All right. Time for Michael's tip of the week. Buy some mouse pyre gear. Buy some mouse pyre decals. Buy some mouse pyre buttons. So much you can do to support this podcast. The tip is to share the love. Till then, this is Michael the Mail Guy saying bye. So, yes, speaking of mouse pyre gear, you can head over to dgpclothing.com and pick up some mouse pyre shirts and we have a yeah, wait, these things pullover. exist? Yeah, we have a oh, pullover wow. and uh, we have the stickers. So you can help support the podcast that way. We would really appreciate that. All right, so thank you for your email, Michael. Thank you, Dan the Man, Fancy Nancy, and uh, 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 Giselle. Giselle. <laughs> All right, so we've, uh, you know, Tim over here has been saying for a long time, you know, give us some uh, emails, send us emails. Yeah. It would be nice to get some new emailers. We appreciate everyone who does email in, but it'd be nice to hear from someone new. Yeah. Who are you? I mean, you're listening right now. We know we're, we know we're boring, but like, you know, make us not boring by telling us something, anything. You know, even if you just want to write in to tell me that I suck, just. You know, or if you just want to tell Tim to shut up about yeah, emails. just shut up, <laughs> Tim. Would you shut up about emails already? Like, you know, hey Anthony, you suck too. Like, whatever, <laughs> Diggs, you need a new microphone. I don't know, whatever <laughs> it is. Like, you know, we know we needed one new microphone here, but nonetheless, so just say something. It's not that hard. Email us. Yes, mousepire at gmail dot com or message the mousepire page. Just like. Jadell did. Yeah, Jadell did. Yeah. Is Facebook. that the first message we've ever gotten on the Mouse Pyre page? Uh, no, not really. But Either, maybe uh, that are read. Facebook oh, okay. Messenger or uh, Twitter DM. Or... I mean, or just message one of us <laughs> individually. Say, you know, message me. Message Tim Fresh One on Facebook and say, hey, I want to say something about the show. I will say, shout out to my friend Jackie. She's the uh, queen of mouse lovers unofficially, but, you know, officially unofficially. Jackie Clark. Uh, I've been trying to make her message in before I talked about her on the air here, but she she said in a comment this week that we like she to go off topic. She said in a comment topic. that she didn't even remember what the podcast was, first of all. Well, well she yeah, doesn't know what it's about we because we topic. go off topic a lot. <laughs> Which isn't true, really. We don't really go off topic that often. We go often. way off topic. No, and we that's, don't. And I think it's on purpose. No, we go off topic in, <laughs> but within topic. True. Yeah. I've been to Hot Topic. I have a hot topic card. There's a hot topic but now. There's now there's the box lunch too. Yes, they are owned by Hot Topic. Right. It's basically the same store with. But everybody. I can't use my hot topic card in box lunch, which pisses me off. That's stupid. It is stupid. Anyway, did we just go off topic? That'd be yeah, like this is way off topic. But Jackie, that would be like using not being able to use my uh, Toys R Us credit card at Babies. Jackie, send us a message. Tell us something. 
This is to you, Jackie Clark. Be the new messenger. You I'm going to send you a message and tell you to message First us. of all, I'm not going to believe that you're listening and tell you messages. Yes. Otherwise, I'm just going to think Tim is full of shit and he hasn't introduced this podcast to anybody. And, or that he introduced us to a thousand people and then all of a sudden told those thousand people not to listen anymore. And the fact that she <laughs> says that we went off topic is fake news. Yeah, fake news. Until we hear from her. And then, uh, Hashtag how about, fake news. How about this? I can say Mary, Mary Holmstein, I bet you'll listen when especially if i tell you that you were talked about listen send a message tell us something i know you listen to these podcasts this maybe not this one specifically but you listen to podcasts so uh if you th- would like to compare our podcast to another podcast we don't want to hear it no uh but we'll pretty much listen to anything else you got to say yes all right so help support the podcast Head over to patreon.com slash mousepire. There you can give a awesome special Michael the Mel Guy $3 donation to help support the podcast. Or you can uh, pick any of the other incentives we have there. Or you can uh, just uh, message us and uh, send a donation through PayPal. A one-time donation be fine. Patreon.com actually is a monthly donation. So just like Nancy has done and Scott and... Fernando Xebert Hubbard. Help support the podcast. Visit patreon.com slash mousepire. And don't forget, you can head over to YouTube. Follow our YouTube channel, Mousepire Podcast. There you will find our podcast on YouTube. So if you don't want to deal with Lipsin and iTunes and Stitcher and all that kind of stuff, you can listen to us on YouTube. So check that out. Speaking of Fernando Xavier Hubbard. I hear from him basically every day on Facebook, whether it's in the form, mostly in the form of, me being tagged in a food post. You guys are so cute. Now, I want to know where his his email's been because we have not heard an email from Fernando in what seems like quite some time. I I, I think he's been really busy. He's Just, not busy enough to tag me in a freaking well, Facebook post. I think that's when he's on the toilet. And then oh, he's like going he can't through. send us an email while he's on the toilet. That's too much. You know what? We don't want to hear none of his Michael excuses over here. I don't know. I'm just saying he he's probably busy because he he actually. I'm just, I'm he calling actually, him out right now. I'm calling you out. He Fernando. actually calls me to check up on me to see how I'm doing. And uh, he's all, oh, sorry, I haven't called. I've been busy, blah, 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 blah. Uh, hey, I was, hey, stop calling him and start emailing. We don't want to. I actually, you know, remember I was uh, selling the candy for my friend's kid? Yes. He bought one. I still have it. He still hasn't gotten it for me yet. So if it was, so I'm just saying, maybe he's busy. I don't know. But Fernando, yeah, because he's uh, pretty much. Last week, after one of our episodes, he commented on something, and it was a ref- he referred to the episode. So I know he's listening. So I guess you need to email Fernando because Anthony is uh, not happy with you. <laughs> there was a time when Fernando was almost about to be uh, named the new mail guy because of Michael doing oh, right. some lagging, but now Fernando is doing his own lagging, and well, he's dropped down uh, in in uh, wrestling parlance. He has dropped down the. Uh, he has dropped down to a mid carter now. Whoa! Is he like the flyweight? No, a mid carter. Just make sure you don't. Otherwise, get... he shows up like during hour two of Raw. Just make sure he doesn't uh, go down to Nell Carter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give you a break! <laughs> wow. Let's do some clapping. All right, we're done. Bye. <laughs> Adios, señores. <laughs> All right, before we go, I want to mention that there is some construction work going on at Mickey and Friends Parking Structure. Well, they've converted the whole bottom floor, uh, Chippendale, to handicap. Right. And they've moved the um, the uh, electric charging stations to the second floor. Oh, okay. Um, this is all secondhand. I, I, don't, I haven't seen it myself, but that's what my friends tell me, is they've moved the electric stations to the second floor. Apparently, they have signs. And then the entire bottom floor is handicapped. Did that take over the former handicapped, or is it taking over what used to be their preferred parking? That's a good question. Um, I'll maybe I'll try to check it out. Yeah, next that's a good time. question. Maybe next time we park, we'll just go up the escalators and see what's there. But yeah, they might have moved those to the the hand. The, excuse me, not handicapped, but the uh, the charging stations just take over the handicap on one level, and then they quadrupled the handicap down below or something yeah so that's going on over there also big oversized vehicles 
you know, RVs. Oh yeah, that too. Trailers, all that kind of stuff is being told to go park at Toy Story. Yeah, or anywhere, basically anywhere else. They're not. Uh, yeah, they're not going to let you park over there. Does that mean that uh, we think that they're about to start breaking Pinocchio up? Well, that's to, to that's the other thing. If, if, if they're going to do this hotel that we're we're saying maybe could start in the next couple months. Um, they're also going to have to, because that's going to get rid of all the downtown Disney parking. So they're going to have well, to Well, downtown Disney out. parking is just being relocated to uh, uh, Simba or whatever it is. Temporarily. Well, that used, well to, that used to be downtown Disney parking anyways. When these yeah. downtown Disney first opened, that's all the parking there was was Simba. That used to be downtown Disney parking. There wasn't, the stitch lot didn't exist? No. Because no. I remember when I first went to a movie in the early 2000s, I uh, used to park over at Simba and walk over, and you would get uh, parking validation for Simba from the theater. Hmm. Well, they, in my opinion, they're going to have to build this new structure sooner, I think even before the hotel. Well, I think they wanted say. to build the structure anyways because they're already so far behind on what the original plan for the Eastern Gateway was that the sooner they get broken ground, because obviously they I assumed that they would have wanted to have break, broken ground on the Pumba parking structure by now. Oh yeah, long ago. Oh, yeah. So the sooner that they can get everybody get uh, Pinocchio cleared out and break ground on the parking structure extension on Pinocchio, the better. Anyways, no matter what, how you look at it. Do you think? Two questions. One: Do you think once the structure is up there in Pinocchio, that it's going to have like a second floor? walkway down into the security area? Oh, and that's that's first question. Second question is, uh, how long, do you remember how long it took to put up Mickey and Friends? I'm assuming that it would probably be two-thirds the time to put up this new structure. Well, they're going to have to. They'll be, once again, getting back to the whole 24 hours, 24-7 working, people working 24-7 and all that. Uh because then another thing you're talking about how they're going to get people a certain way, they can either go two routes, they can either have a separate escalator coming down from that parking oh, structure. Yeah, escalators, yeah. Or they can connect it a la how they connected the new ET parking lot at Universal to the to the uh, Curious George, where it's just basically like a skywalk mm-hmm. that goes across the road from the ET parking and connects it with... Uh, Curious George. Right. So that way you have to, you basically you have to walk from E.T. through, then like on the edge of Curious George, where but, but E.T. is kind of basically standing alone and there's just a big walkway. It actually kind of reminded me of uh, how the parking at uh, um, City Walk in Florida. Okay. Do you remember how the parking is separate and there's a lot of little skywalks that from one one building into another, and then you had those little big open air like kind of walkways. My well, my got you down to the actual city walk itself. It's very kind of similar to that. My hope they might go along with something like that. My hope was that they wouldn't make you come all the way down and then walk underneath to go like they do currently underneath through Chippendale to get well, to security. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't think I hope that they're going to do be, that. I would hope that they're going to put an additional escalator. That was what I was leading with, well, that's what additional I'm saying. escalator if not, system. what they'll do is they might, like I said, do a, like a little uh, skywalk where it goes from the new parking lot and just connects, just brings it over and connects with maybe the second floor of uh, the current Mickey and Friends. Yeah. Where you just, and then everybody will just funnel from both parking structures down to the... Well, if they connect them, I mean, if they literally butt it up against the next one, then... Well, then it's all academic. Then once they're butted up against each other, you can just knock out walls and... They walk and all it's, down it's to... Just all one, it's all just one huge parking structure. Right. They would probably rather prefer that because if they get it to be accepted as one parking structure, then they would probably break the record for largest parking structure in the world. Oh, it, would which, very, it would be very clearly they, the largest parking they structure already, in the world. They had the record at one point, but then uh, the parking structure they built in Shanghai beat it. Yeah, uh, if you look it up, in the largest parking structures in the world, this is in the, the Mickey and Friends is in the top 10. Right. Uh, it I used think it's to the be, top six is actually where right, it's Right, it used to be top five, and it used to be number one when it was first built. It was number one in the U.S., yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, parking structure, not total parking right, lot right, right. spots wise. 
no, the no, Mall the of Magic, America, Mall, Mall of America, America and the like and the Disney World lots in general. The you know all they did they just put down pavement, and those are the biggest parking lots in the world. But same thing with Mall of America. But as far as structures go, uh, it's in the top. All right, so that's what's going on over there. Twelve thousand um, spaces. Be aware <laughs> and uh, yeah, don't bring your big trailers because you won't be able to park there. Yeah, or or a large four by four truck. Uh, especially like a long bed, specifically in some of the groups, they're posting pictures of the trucks and saying, "Hey, I don't think I have a big truck," but they're telling me I can't park there. So, um, be prepared to go over to Toy Story. I know you guys park, right, Diggs? You always park at Toy Story. Yep. I don't like Toy Story. I'm a Mickey and Friends or Downtown Disney guy, where we walk across, you know, Pinocchio. But um, you might have to make some alterations here in the uh-huh. next couple of years. I hope you have a good tailor. Do you have a special occasion coming up? Looking to personalize your trip with a keepsake? Create customized buttons for birthdays, engagements, family vacations, even bridal parties. Or just because. Check out ButtonsByDigs.com today. Buttons by Digs. Buttons by Digs. Remember, those are buttons, not pins. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of the Mouse Power Podcast. We appreciate you taking your time to listen. It was fun. In the sun. And you know what? Now it's time to eat because I'm hungry. Yep. So like we said, hey, don't forget or make sure you guys are planning uh, where you guys are going to park with all this stuff going on over there at Mickey and Friends. Seems like there's going to be a lot of hassles over there. Don't forget to APs, get your popcorn bucket if you uh, want that popcorn special, $15 for the bucket, $1 refills. You must have your annual pass. Some carts ask for your pass and ID. Some just ask for your pass. So make sure you have both because you never know who's going to ask for what. When I got uh, my bucket, they actually didn't ask me for my ID, which I was really surprised. Wow. Don't forget all that refurbs going on in the parks. Paradise Pier. Two attractions are open. King Triton's Carousel and Toy Story Midway Mania. You can still go on those attractions and... Don't forget, if you guys are going to get a fast pass for Toy Story, go over to Little Mermaid over there on the side. You'll They have the little kiosk there. You can get your fast passes for Toy Story and World of Color. Kill two birds with one stone. Then again, I don't know why anybody would want to kill two birds with one stone. Okay, so as usual, if you guys want to know what we're doing, check out the social medias. We are, of course, Mousepire on Facebook. We are at Mousepire on the Twitters and Instagram. I am at Dubax for Life. That is Dubax, the number for life on Twitter. Check out what I stupid stuff I post. <laughs> uh, this is Tim, and I'm only on Facebook. Tim Fresh One, F R E S H hyphen O N E. Tim Fresh One. Not two. Yep, definitely not two. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Blue Thirteen Thirteen. Also, follow Buttons by Digs on Instagram. There you will see when your button order is going out. Also, help support the podcast. Visit patreon.com slash mousepire. Any donation will help us greatly. We would really appreciate that. And don't forget to head over to YouTube. Check out our YouTube channel, Mouse Power Podcast. You can listen to all the podcasts there, the ones that don't get blocked. Ooh. Also, if you want to pick up some Mouse Power gear, head over to dgpclothing.com. Like we said, we have some shirts there we have hoodies and you can get the stickers and hopefully some more stuff later but yeah help support the podcast and show some love just like michael says show love for the podcast and until next time remember it's always okay to go off topic as long as you end up in the same place you started or something like that so for fest parker woody harrelson ed ted danson i'm anthony i'm tim i'm Diggs. bye, bye. We're doomed. This podcast is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. Audio, sound bites, and other clips are property of their copyright holders. All original stuff is ours and property of mousepire.com. Bad time in the studio. I hate when I lose my spot. Yeah, I haven't heard anything. How'd that go again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Next week, Dirty Award goes to Tim. You're jealous, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> ruh, ruh. <laughs>